You are now rocking with the hottest boxing podcast in the land. True Media Boxing Radio with your host, Coach Malachi Williams. True, true, true. Yeah, 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 man. What's up? What's up? What's up? It's our boy, Coach Malachi Williams in the building. We back. True Media Boston Radio, we are back. We are back. We are back. We back up in here, man. True Media Boston Radio, we back up in here, man. It is what it is. Um, you know, today, happy Friday. Happy Friday. I think there's some fights coming on. Is there a fight come on tonight? Might be a fight come on tonight, I think. Let me, let's look at box. Let's look at boxing scene right quick. I always go to boxing scene because they have the schedule out. Boxing scene have always have the fight schedule out. So let me see. Uh, wow. It says that David Benavidez is open to rehydration clause to fight Canelo. <laughs> okay. All right. 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 Looking at that right there. That's interesting. Yeah, that's a fight. Come on tonight. Um, Chris Burke versus Ashley Lane. This fight might be going on right now. It's in the UK. I knew it was a fight today. I just, I just wasn't sure who was fighting. Yeah, that's a fight going on in the U in the UK right now. Chris Burke versus Ashley Lane. Uh, that's for a vacant British bantamweight title. And then tomorrow we got Dalton Smith versus Jose Cepeda. Jose Cepeda, I think that's in the, that's at 140 pounds. Jose Cepeda, uh, they're fighting in the UK at the Sheffield Arena. Dalton Smith, junior welterweight bout. Um, yeah, so so that's what's going on in boxing. Uh, do we got over 100? Yeah, we got over 100. Let's give everybody a round of applause. Give everybody a round of applause, man. Shout out to um, shout out to everybody who watching on Twitter as well as um, YouTube. We're going to get live today. We're going to get it crunk. I want to talk about David Benavidez because there's been so much doggone between Tank and Canelo talk. I just want to talk about David Benavidez. Haven't got around to speak to him. Um, you know what? I ain't going to count my chickens for the hats. I'm not going to say nothing about that. It, it, it's, it's something that I'm working on. I'm trying to land an interview. I'm trying to land an interview. You get what I'm saying? So, I'm, you know, trying to see what's up. Uh, all right, but I'm, I'm going to keep that under wraps. It's right here in Florida, too. Right here in Florida, but I'm, I'm going to keep that under wraps. I'm going to see I'm gonna see how that's going to work out. Um, anyways, but yeah, so didn't get, really get a chance to talk about David Benavidez as of late to, you know, just a lot what's been going on. Jose been, Jose been saying what he's been saying. Um, <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> Jose been saying what he's been saying. And this is what I see going on. Again, I'm going to give you guys my objective opinion. This is what I see going on. I'm not team neither side, team Benavidez or team Canelo. I'm a boxing fan that just want to see the fights. That's it. Old school boxing fan want to see the fights, right? But this is what I see going on. Um, and I have it in my opening uh, monologue. As a matter of fact, I'm going to just address it in my opening monologue. Shout out to Daniel Agnew. Salute to you, fam. Shout out to SP Got Beats. Salute, brother. Shout out to Knockdown 305. Uh, shout out to the lovely Elena, Daniel Agnew, D-Town Funk. What's going on, brother? Jamie from New York, Knockdown 305, the one and only Mr. Ham. Salute, brother. Shout out to, uh, shout out to uh, Santana. Salute to you, fam. Let's see. Shout out to Jason Phillips, G5. Who else we have? Mr. Juan Carlo, SP Got Beats. Shout out to M. Lopez. He said, what's been to be that biggest purse for a fight? I mean, yeah, I, yeah. 
Um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you said that. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tell y'all. I'm gonna tell y'all what's going on. I'm gonna tell y'all what I see going on. <laughs> a lot of hey, shout out to uh, shout out to Tila. A lot of fantasy and promoting. A lot of witness protection program going on. I'm, I'm hearing a lot of witness protection talk. I'm hearing a lot of wait a minute, nine 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 double standards, hypocrisies. I'm hearing a whole lot of that, right? And I think everybody's been hearing it. That's why I say, you know, what? I'm gonna let people call the show and just let them talk. I love when people call the show, let them talk because, you know, it's like, man, okay, this is what the people are saying. Shout out to Miss Parker. What's going on, sis? This is what the people are saying. So, so we'll see. We'll see exactly. Uh, we see what it is coming from the people. When I say the people, whether you support Canelo, I already know what Canelo fans are saying. Canelo fans, there's a lot of y'all. There's a lot of Canelo fans. I'm not going to lie. There's probably more Canelo fans than David Benavidez fans. And you guys have made it abundantly clear. You know what I mean? How you feel about the situation. Um, I get that. I get you guys very well. I have a PhD when it comes to Canelo fans. I have a PhD when it comes to Tank Davis fans, Tyson Fury fans, Deontay Wilder fans, Errol Spence fans, uh, Terrence Crawford fans, uh, even Shakur Stevenson fans now. Shakur Stevenson fans. It's just, you know, a lot of you guys have, a lot of you guys have the same thing in common. There's a commonality with, uh, boxing fans on social media when it comes to their favorite fighter there's a commonality there now some so, now some some boxing fans are a little radical there's a couple of y'all y'all radical than a motherfucker why i have no idea but some of you guys are very some of you are radical radical than the motherfucker they're like y'all you know i don't give a damn i don't give a fuck this and that this and that yada yada yada, yada. um i dropped the video today with bill haney you know, part two of the interview because we did he had part we did part one and part two. I dropped that today. I dropped one yesterday, one today, and um, I heard uh, uh, one brother. I ain't gonna say the brother's name, but the brother from Baltimore, my brother. You know, he went out for Bill. Yeah, Bill, bring that shit to Baltimore. You come to Baltimore, you heard me. You know what's up. <laughs> so it, it gets like this, right? I'm I was looking at. I also was looking at um, an interview from a person that I'm looking to do a lot of business with. You know, I really love this guy. He's a comedian. He's going to be on this show. I'm going to get him on the show. He's a comedian. And he was talking about how he, he, was, he was doing an interview on, uh, he was doing an interview on, on, um, on Boss, Talk, Boss Talk Radio 101 over there in Dallas, right? And he say, man, they were asking him a social media question. He say, man, what they, it's two things about social media. People, y'all got to stop believing everything these motherfuckers say. Like when you, I mean, I'm saying like when you hear a celebrity or whatever the case may be, a celebrity because he's in a position that you're not in from a spotlight standpoint, these motherfuckers be, can tell you anything. And a lot of people believe it because of the position that those celebrities are in. So he addressed that, right? And then he spoke about uh, how on social media, he said, man, you see some of the toughest motherfucking gangsters that you ever seen on social media. Bro, like I've seen digital John Gotti's. I seen digital Sammy the Bulls. I seen digital Mexican Mafia. I seen digital. Um, I seen digital. Um, 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 dog on. Um, I seen digital Kelly Park Crips. I seen digital. Uh, you know Hoover Street. I seen who no um, Hoover Street Crips. I seen um, digital Eight Tray Crips. I've seen digital Pyrus. I've seen digital Gangster Disciples. I've seen. Uh, you know, bro, like on, on, on this shit right here, even YouTube channels, I'm like, damn dog, how you, how you, dog, you been threatening niggas since you've been on YouTube, but you ain't ran up on nobody. <laughs> niggas ain't ran up on nobody. Dude, literally, you've been on YouTube for 25 years, and you ain't ran up on nobody. You threatened 500 people, but how many you ran up on? None. You ain't going to no fights. You don't even leave your apartment. You don't leave your mama basement. Nigga, you won't even go nowhere in your in your city. We don't see you in your city posted up on the block like them like them real like them real niggas who out there on that street shit for real. Like you don't see, I, we don't see you nowhere talking that shit. But behind that can but 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 behind that microphone and that computer, Lord have mercy. True, true, Ooh. true. Like, God damn, dog, like, nigga be looking mad as in, yeah, nigga, yeah. Yeah, like, what, what nigga from Chicago? Come to Chicago. <laughs> nigga, you ain't, nigga, we ain't seeing you nowhere. Anyways, anyway, car ain't got no roof. 
True, true, true. Anyway, let's get into the show. Now, has David Benavidez been vindicated? Has he been vindicated? That's the question that I have, right? And a series of interviews from David Benavidez and Jose Benavidez Sr. Shout out to Nessa Gills for doing that interview down in Miami with Jose Benavidez. And um, shout out to those boys at Fight Hub TV who did the interview with uh, Jose with uh, with Jose Benavidez. Jose Fight Hub TV. David David did the interview with uh, with the, the boxing boys. He's down here. He's in Florida, right here in Miami. So. Um, you know, in Miami. So we're going we gonna to see what's up. Anyways, in a series of interviews from David Benavidez as well as Jose Sr., both Benavidez's have been telling anyone who would listen that Saul Canelo Alvarez is ducking the Mexican monster, David Benavidez. True, true, true. But this ball been taking the easy matches. Fighting other balls. For years, they have been saying this, but Canelo fans and the media held strong in their defense of Canelo. They held real, real strong, right? Now, it seems that it's starting to change a little bit. Sports writers, reporters, um, Hall of Fame boxers, Hall of Famers, you know, and even Stephen A. Smith, you know, are saying that, are saying the same thing. What are they saying? They're saying that Canelo is decking the Mexican monster. True, true, true. Uh, Canelo fans are out in droves. They out in droves, boy. I'm talking about, boy, I've seen Canelo fans in Alaska. I've seen Canelo fans in Antarctica. I've seen Canelo fans in Siberia. I've seen Canelo fans doggone in the Himalayas. You know, the, uh, the, the, uh, the upper northmost part of China. I've seen them everywhere, boy. Canelo fans are deep. And they will pull up on anybody but they will pull up on anybody. They don't, <laughs> boy. Like damn, you know. I, you know, I'm like, God damn, to Canelo fans. Shit, it's a. Well, I, I didn't realize how many of y'all it was. I said, it's a whole lot of goddamn Canelo fans, but these, now these motherfuckers don't be pushing. But now we had, we had quite a few Canelo fans call the show this week, and they even said that, hey man, Canelo's ducking. He's ducking this guy. Canelo fans, right? So it is what it is. Y'all know me. Y'all know me. I'm going to call it right now. I'm going to call it where I motherfucker see it. Man. I, I, I get 25 fucks either way. You get what I'm saying? Like, I, I ain't getting, ain't none of these motherfuckers bringing bread with the coat. So if you want me to count for your fighter, you better tell him, you better tell him, you, if you want me to count for your fighter, you better tell him to cut me a check. True, true, true. CTC, cut the check. I ain't getting paid. There's no incentives for me to cap. Anyways, anyways, everywhere Canelo went, report, now check this out. I, I, it's, it's something I want to tell you. That's something I want to share with y'all too. Someone, somebody wants to have a child too. Um, all of these guys, Stephen A. Smith and all these guys are saying that Canelo's ducking David Benavidez, right? Uh, Canelo was in the same situation, the same position that Errol Spence was in before the Crawford fight was made. What do I mean by that? I'm going to tell you. Why? Um, everywhere Canelo went, reporters and Canelo fans alike ask him the same question. When are you going to fight David Benavidez? Irregardless of what you say, right now, everybody's saying, hey, man, when you going to fight this dude? We tired of him talking shit. We want you to shut his mouth. Do you get what I'm saying? Canelo can't go anywhere without being asked this question. How do I know? He was at a press conference, at his press conference with Jaime Munguil, and the reporters was asking him about David Benavidez. They wasn't asking him about Jaime Munguil. Jaime Munguil is right there on the stage. And as soon as Canelo come down and talk to reporters, only thing they want to talk about is David Benavidez. True, true, true. David Benavidez, David Benavidez. Um, yeah, hello, hello. Hey, um, um, yeah, what, what's your question? David Benavidez, when are you going to fight David Benavidez? I right, answer that question. Hey, um, hey, reporter, who you with? Oh, I want to say, what's your question? When are you going to fight David Benavidez? Okay, I don't want to talk to you. Okay, um, the reporter over there, what's your question? When you want to fight David Benavidez? It's 25 reporters here. What are y'all questions? When are you going to fight David Benavidez? Look. I tell you what, he brings nothing to the table. You know what I mean? He's 25 pounds overweight. You know, he's not really Mexican. He's guacamolean. You know, he doesn't wear my draws, my Canelo draws. You know, I need $200 million to fight him. You know, if I get $200 million, then such and such, such, such. I'm like, God damn. So, you know, so, so I get it. So he's in that same position. And I'm going to tell you what I mean by that. When Errol Spence, Errol Spence even said that he got tired of all of his friends, fans, and family asking him about Terrence Crawford. You remember when Errol Smith said, hey, man, everywhere I went, dog, people kept asking me about, man, when you going to fight Terrence Crawford? I got time, man. I got tired of people tell, asking me, man, that question, man. Man, goddamn, man. I'm just saying, man, where I went, dog, they were asking me about Terrence Crawford, man. Like, 
You know, they said I said oh, he's on the wrong side of the street. Now he ain't on the wrong side of the street no more. He's free agent. And they said, I told him, they reminded me, I said, when I get the three belts, I'm going to do the heavy lifting. I'm going to clean up my side of the street first. I was able to run high behind that for a little while, all of that. And then now, 25 years later, it's like, I ain't really got nowhere to go. I can fight Thurman, but I ain't going to fight him. It's like, man, goddamn, man, fuck it. You get what I'm saying? So just everywhere he goes, this question is being posed to him. You get what I'm saying? And Errol Smith said that he got tired of it. The pressure built up so much with Errol Spence that Errol Spence caved in. And he gave the fans the fight that they wanted to see. And we saw, we saw the result of that, right? Jose Benavidez Sr. said in the interview with Fight Hub TV, you know, that some of Canelo fans are starting to see that Canelo has no intentions of fighting his son, David Benavidez. And he says some Canelo fans are now starting to come over on our side and become uh, the Mexican monster fans. True, true, true. I have the video. I'll play it. I have the video. I'm going to play it. You know me. I got the receipts now. I don't say shit unless I don't have the receipts. You know that. Now, this situation, as I said before, is very similar to Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence. Not from a dynamics of how long it took the fight to be made. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about purely from the, from, from the perspective of and the position of everywhere Canelo goes, he's asked about David Benavidez. Everywhere he goes, Mexico, Europe, golf course, uh, the strip club, wherever. When you go shoot commercials, shoot commercials, you know, he shoot commercials. Hey, man, I like the commercial you shot. Hey, but, but, hey, but when you go fight David Benavidez, like everywhere he goes, right? Same shit with, same shit with Crawford, same shit with Errol Smith. You get what I'm saying? Um, now, the situation is very similar, as I said before. You get what I'm saying? Even Canelo diehard fans are tired of hearing about it. David Benavidez, they tired of hearing about David Benavidez. They wish that he would just go away. You got Canelo diehard fans, like they, 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 they hate David Benavidez. Why y'all keep talking about David Benavidez? He ain't fought nobody. He ain't Mexican. You know, they're trying to convince other people that David Benavidez is really nobody. You know, he's just another fly on the wall. Let's talk about somebody else. Let's move along. Nothing to see here. This is what I see going on on social media. The only problem is, ain't nobody going for it. True, true, true. Ain't nobody going for it. As I said before, they wish that people would forget about David Benavidez altogether. But that's not going to happen. Do you guys feel that the public perception is starting to change on how the boxing public is, vo is viewing Canelo Alvarez? As it relates to fighting the Mexican monster, David Benavidez. Let's give everybody that's here a round of applause. Just so you know, just, just asking a question. Um, shout out to Elena. Shout out to Elena. Salute to you. She said, Elena gifted five members, gifted five people a membership. Let's give Elena a round of applause. <laughs> and let's hit Elena with the huggy bear. Down from the bar, there's a platform stage. People pimping, pimping, sharp as razor blades. Uh, shout out, hey, shout out to Charles Edward Cheese. Hey, okay. We're dropping that. Bam, hundo on your boy. Hey, Leroy. Super Chat received. Playtime's over, boy. boy. I want to say, Cheese say, Coach, let's get it. He say, Jackery segregated nostrils is insane. Left side wants nothing to do with the right. <laughs> Rolling my ass off. I, I nearly died. Oh, segregated nostrils. You talking about who said that? Jackie Hernandez? Jack, Jack Hernandez said that cheese. This show has been sponsored by, you know, anybody who donates fifty dollars or more, you you will become a sponsor of the show. This so Charles Ever Cheese said it off. Charles Ever Cheese said it off. So this show has been sponsored by Charles Ever Cheese. Let's give that brother the huggy bear. Down from the bar, there's a platform stage. People Hey, baby, we talking about Jack. <laughs> hey, shout out to Food Revolution. Shout out to Elena. Shout out to SP Got Beats. Jackie Hernandez. Shout out to uh, shout out to Air. Uh, shout out, salute to New Country in the building. The one, Mr. Ham, a big boss. Yeah, I'm gonna get um, Adolfo from Sacktown. Yeah, I'm gonna get um, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get some I'm gonna get um. Uh, we're gonna get a comedian on here. We're gonna get uh Bubba Dub on the show. We're gonna get him on the show. We're working on that. And we're going to get Bubba Dub on the show. And I have a fighter that I'm trying to get on the show as well. 
I'm a, we're going to have Troy Isley come on the show Friday. Not Friday, Monday. Troy Isley will be on the show Monday. Him and Free Ray Ricky Ross, because uh, Free Ray Ricky Ross manages him. He's one of the managers, him and Jay Prince. Um, we're going to get him on, but I got, a, I got a big fish. I got a big fish that I'm trying to, you know, trying to get on here. It, sh it shouldn't be hard. He's going to say, yeah, no. You know, you don't know me. You know, the show, go show must go on. Um, so we're going to see what's up. I'm going to see what we can do in order to make this happen. I'm going to be very aggressive in my approach. Very aggressive pause in my approach. You get what I'm saying? So we're going we gonna to make it do what it do. Uh, shout out to School of X, man. Salute to you, fam. We have uh, 378 people in here. We got three, three, 334 watching right now on YouTube. And we have, uh, we have the, the remainder watching on Twitter. So we got, before we get into the show, we got to say all praises due to the most high, the most exalted, the greatest human being on the planet Earth, Mr. Al Heyman. Well, you know, I guess I got to be like everybody else and saying Al Heyman. <laughs> I can quit my job now, baby. Six figures, baby. You feel me? I'm about to but, but a name, a name. Do you have a name? Oh, nah, nah. I ain't got no name, you know. Name them names, man. <laughs> they know who they is. Name them names. <laughs> Please, the names need to be named. They know who they is. <laughs> the Mexican monster. Yeah, man, it is. <laughs> it is what it is. So name the names, man. Name the names. The names need to be named. <laughs> the Mexican monster. Shout out to my sister, man. Shout out to my sister, Bless. She said, I can quit my job now, baby. Hey, guess what, Bless? He fuck around to quit that job. They had to go right back. And when, 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 he, when he went back to the boss, he said, he say, well, well, well. You were doing all that capping. Al Heyman on Big Abia, six figures. You made a hundred thousand dollars in that fight you had about a year and a half ago, and you you start doing the Holy Ghost and the Tusi roll. And I'm like, dude, hundred thousand dollars ain't no bread, dog. Listen, you supposed to keep working, put that hundred thousand while up, paid your manager, paid who you needed to pay, paid your taxes on it or whatever, and whatever the remainder is, just sit on that, cause that ain't no that ain't no money to quit no job. I'm telling you right now, hundred thousand dollars ain't nothing. Goddamn six figure Johnny, six figure Johnny quit his job. Nigga, six figures with the bowling, with the traveling everywhere. Rod said, Coach, when are you going to get six figures back on? I haven't reached out to him. I just got to reach out to him and see what he say. You know, he went to bowling, you know, with, you know, with the shooting dice. I heard he was tricking. I heard, I heard dog on Johnny Rice was tricking. I, I don't know how true that is now. You know, I heard he was tricking and everything, right? I say, man, but goddamn six figure Johnny. Now he back to nine to five, Johnny. True, true, true. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up, man? Um, you know, Sapphire, Sapphire Gentleman Club. What's going on? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, man. Uh, yeah, uh, can, can I can I speak to Dave? Um, uh, yeah, Dave the boss. Yeah, yeah, he's here. Here you go. Um, hello. Yeah, hey, Dave, how you doing? Who is it? Uh, this is Johnny Rice. Oh, six figure Johnny. Oh, oh, okay. What's up, Johnny? What's up? You still balling, huh, baby? You balling? Hey, man. Look here, man. Um. Yeah, I need to talk to you, boss. Boss? Oh, wait, what you mean, boss? You, you know, you're, you're balling right now, right? Hey, man, look, man, um, you know, my pocket shaking like booty meat. Got, I got lint in my pocket now. Lint? What you mean, lint? Did you, did you tell me about a year and a half ago, about a year or so ago, that you know you can quit your job and all this stuff there? You know, you, you know, six figures and all that there? Yeah, man, that man, that, that money gone, man, money gone. It's gone already. Yeah, man, it's gone. Don't worry, don't, don't, don't worry about it. So what's up? Hey, man, I just want to know, can I get my job? <laughs> I don't want to know how to get my job back. Hey. True, <laughs> true, true. Hey, I ain't gonna lie. I've been in that situation before, though. I've been in that situation where I quit a job. I used to quit a job in the hall. I quit a job in a minute, boy. Nigga, fuck this. You know, fuck this job. Cause I, you know, I, I don't work. I don't work somewhere everywhere. I don't did construction before. I don't did landscaping. Uh, worked on a garbage truck before, slinging garbage. This before they had the little machine that grabbed the garbage can and dump it. I used to work on the back of the garbage truck, slinging garbage. Get up four o'clock in the morning. Get to the doggone. Get to the doggone um, job at about five o'clock. We hit the road. We hit our route. Nigga, I don't hit every subdivision. Every goddamn subdivision. I'm like, man, God, nigga, tired than a motherfucker, man. I was a bartender. Uh, shit, I shit, I was, I was, uh, I worked in the gas station before. Nigga, I don't had all the jobs. All the jobs. Bartender, yeah, I worked in the gas station before. Man, shit, nigga, I was a, uh, a cashier at a gas station at a um. At the Exxon, at the Exxon gas station. Boy, you name it, boy, you name the job, I pretty much don't have it. True, true, true. Man, I quit that bar, I quit that bartender job like a damn fool. Nigga, I was making a thousand dollars a week. My dumb ass. I was making a thousand dollars a week. This back in 1999. 2000, this 1999, dog. Listen, I went to ABC bartender school 
in um in Orlando. Right before I started, this is right before I started, right before I went to full sale, which is in Orlando, went apart, right? Man, I went to that motherfucker, man. Man, I was making I, I, I was working on I was working on International Drive. We talking about 99, dog. 99. Nigga making a thousand dollars a week. That was a lot of money in 1999. Nigga, I, I you know I'm trying I'm trying to be a rapper, right? I'm trying to be a rapper. So so my mama, my mom had no passed away. My mom passed away July the she passed away July the third. Was it July? When did my mother pass away? I got I got to look on my arm. When my mother passed away, shit. I think she passed away July. Let me see. Yeah, yeah. She she passed away. She, I think she passed away July the third. She passed away like a month before her birthday, July the third, nineteen ninety nine. Right. So anyway, I had no made a little demo tape and shit. I was trying to be a rapper, dog. I say, man, I'm finna, I'm finna make this rap shit happen, dog. I'm finna make this rap shit happen, right? So, so right after that, right after my mom passed away, you know, I, I was I was working at a, uh, I started, I, I was bartender. I'm working in the bartender, man. You know, I learned, I had to learn the bar and stuff like that. And once I learned the bar, then I was able to take like four or five orders at the same time. And you know, I was making money. I, I had gratuity added into it, everything I sold. So that was like a. Eight uh, percent gratuity on everything I sold, right? So anytime I sold a drink, I you know the the tip was already built in. So I just um add once I added the register, once I counted the money at night, you know eight percent of eight percent of whatever's made automatically goes to me. You get what I'm saying? So I was doing that. Um, I did that. Then plus what everybody left in the tip jar. So with the tip jar. And then I would make a part of like two fifteen an hour, but with the tips, with the gratuity and the tips, I was making about a thousand dollars a week. My dumb ass, I had no made enough money. Made, went, I had no made enough money, right? Went to the studio, cut me a CD. I'm thinking it's simple as that. I'm gonna make this CD, dog. Yeah, dog. Everybody, I got my artwork done, nigga. The, the classic finna get ready. This one, the classic used to come to Orlando, right? The classic finna get ready to come to Orlando, dog. Yeah, nigga, this it, nigga. I'm finna be a big time rapper. Everybody gonna see I got a CD. They just gonna start buying. And I'm uh, and, and guess what? I'm gonna be paid. True, true, <laughs> true. My dumb ass, <laughs> nigga. Hey, listen. I went. Listen. I went. I went triple plastic. <laughs> went triple plastic, nigga. I went triple plastic. But then I ended up getting a demo deal. I ended up getting a demo deal with Atlantic Records. This this when Ti Ti was with a Ti was with a record label. Called uh, before he got signed. I'm serious album. Ti made an album called I'm Serious. Hold on. I need. I, I always talk about this, right? Because they, I got signed. They put me on the shelf. I need to see what record label he was with. What record label he was with? It did start out on Arista. Uh, it say Arista because Arista ended up picking it up. But he was with an independent. He was with an independent record label. This was before he was picked up by by Atlantic, Atlantic, Arista, all that. That right before he was picked up by them by Atlantic Records. Craig Calvin was over there. Uh, Beanie, he came out with a, with a song called with Be He came out with a song with Beanie Man in there called them series or something like that. Right. This, it, it, this was. It was on the independent album before it got picked up by the majors. So just the timing of it, you know, when they gave me the demo deal, I ended up getting forty thousand dollars. I ended up getting some bread, right? When they gave me the demo deal, I ended up getting some bread, and I got locked up right after. I got locked up right after that too, dog. Nigga went to jail. I mean, I man, it was just man. I was so I was happy, nigga. I thought I was gonna be the next. I thought <laughs> I thought I was gonna be the next the juvenile, you know, something like that, right? Boys, they gave me a demo deal today. They, they, once they signed T.I., it was a rap, nigga. They had all that sitting on the shelf. Man. True, true, true. Anyway, shout out to Raphael from uh, dropping that two-dollar super chat. He said, can't wait for JBN and D Blas on mental gymnastics. Bruh, I mean, now what I'm talking about, we talk about David Ben the Uh shout out to Air, shout out to Air um um what's his, what's the name? Betting court. I don't wanna I don't wanna mispronounce her name. Air Betting Court. So, dropping that quarter of a dog. Hey, okay. He said, Coach, you think Canelo was marinating this fight with Benny Vidas for a super fight with the Saudis? Man, look here, man. The people who've been saying that have been the Canelo fans, to be honest with you. I don't know where that Saudis rumor came from, dog. I'm being honest with you, fam. I don't know where that Saudis rumor came from. 
I, 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 I don't know. Hey, but I, I, I heard it. I, the first time I heard it, the first time I heard it was, uh, was with, uh, was with, uh, was with, uh, I think, hold on, where did I hear that from? Was that, I think that was, that was Canelo fans. You know what I mean? Canelo fans. Yeah, that was with Canelo fans. Yeah, they the one. I don't know where that came from, dog. I don't know. Maybe, maybe someone spoke to the Sheik. No, not Sheik. Uh, Turkey Island Sheik or whatever. I don't know. I'm going to tell you guys, I don't know. I don't know where it came from. You get what I'm saying? Where I'm at now in boxing is this here. We don't been up. We don't been through a lot enough enough emotional roller coasters to jump out the window at anything. Until I physically see it, I'm going about what I see right now. And until I physically see this fight happen, I can't assume anything. You can't assume anything with boxing. You can't assume anything with boxing. You get what I'm saying? So I just want to throw that out there. Anyways, um, do we got the likes up yet? Yeah, we, we, we don't have 200 yet. Once we get over 200, I'll drop it. Uh, he say, uh, what did he say? He said that eight ball loss is a, loss is a must. Must have 98 shit. Okay. Uh, shout out to the one Mr. Ham. Salute to you, fam. Shout out to the one Mr. Ham. Shout out to No Cap. He say facts. It was Canelo fans. Yeah, I mean, I, bro, I, I ain't heard that from nobody. I ain't heard Canelo say that. I ain't heard David Benavidez say that. I haven't heard Jose Benavidez say that. None of that. Like, uh, you get what I'm saying? I ain't heard nobody say it. But so I don't know where these guys getting this shit from. You know, maybe, maybe, they, maybe they talk to Turkey out of Sheik. I don't know. Shout out to Food Revolution. She said, "I'm serious. Have some bangers." But I still bump Urban Legend. Yeah, Urban Legend. Urban Legend was a classic. I used to pull up. I used to pull up to the Slauson Swap Meet, banging that shit in my uh, in my in my Kia. <laughs> she said she had, you had the two tears. <laughs> hey, hey, Food Revolution said she had the two tears bumping in the back. Yeah, they got had the two tears. Bam, 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 bam. The trunk rattling, nigga. My nigga, my homeboy. Hey, I had a homeboy, right? This nigga had a. He had a, he had a, 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 a Food Revolution. My homeboy had a trunk full of had a trunk full. Six by nine. <laughs> hey, 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 listen. This man has six by nines all throughout his car. I'm like, my nigga, you got six by nigga, like, bro. I, cause I, I had I had a Nissan Central. I had a Nissan Central with two twelve. I had two EB twelves in the back. Sherwood amp. You, I used, you know, I used to blow my amp all the time because I'm always bumping my shit real loud, right? Man, motherfucker. Man, my homeboy pulled up. He had a old, he had a cocaine white Granada. He had a cocaine white Granada with a caramel, with a care with, with a caramel uh, rag top with a with a chrome visor, right? This nigga had a this nigga had a he had a box. He had a, like a, a, a speaker box, right? Nigga had a a, a, a trunk full of six by nines. <laughs> oh yeah, nigga, yeah, nigga, yeah. If it turn it up, yeah, what's up? Six by nines all inside the car. Yeah, nigga, what's up? You know, <laughs> holla about, holla about. He want a battle, man. I oh, mean, I oh, mean, you don't take them six by nines some goddamn well. True, true, true. Anyways, anyways. Um, before we get into the show, we already said all praises due to Most High, the Most Most Exalted, Mr. Al Hamid. Today is Tenderoni Fridays, but you y'all know what time it is when it comes to this boxing shit. We run it there. Yep, that's right. I'm running things. I'm running things. Cream corn. That's why they call me that. Smooth. I got more measure for your pleasure. Stick with me, baby. I'll have you farting through silk. <laughs> and let a nigga mess with me. I'll jump on him. All 93 pounds of pure dynamite. Yeah, man, nigga, nigga don't come out here with no motherfuckers. Hey, hey, that's the equivalent of a dude running up on you. He, he ain't got no punching power. What they say? He pillow pissy. <laughs> hey, I remember why they said that. Man, he got pillow for fish. He got pillow for fish. Who you gonna knock out? You ain't knocked out nobody. You know, I fought you. you I took your best shot. You got pillow for fish. <laughs> nigga came pulling up. Nigga don't pull up in there with them goddamn six by nines. Nigga had nigga had 15 six by nines in his goddamn trunk trunk and then had them all throughout the car. Man, you don't get your ass up out of here with that, man. I tell you, I, I turned this. I had I turned that motherfucker Sherwood. I had them. I said, let me get the blow the nigga out the water, man. I got the ball, got my got my two EB twelves in the back. Nigga, I got a motherfucking glass. I got my speakers in a glass case, right? It's like a um not glass, it was um, it was um. Uh, yeah, hybrid. You know what, what they call it? Not, 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 not. Um, 
Fiberglass. It was a fiberglass case, right? Had my speakers in the fiberglass case. That shit was glowing on the inside. Nigga, you couldn't tell me nothing. I pulled up. Nigga, turn that shit up. Nigga, that's all you got? So, hey, I put that motherfucking warranty in there. Hey, I put that dog on regulators. Mount up. I put that regulators on there, but that, it was it was a wrap. Yeah, man, get your bitch ass out here with all them goddamn, all them goddamn, uh, got a, got, you know, he got six by nines and tweeters. Nigga got six by nines and tweeters. Holla about he want a battle. True, true, <laughs> true. <laughs> six by nines and tweeters in a, in a cocaine white granada. Poor hush. Nigga just. <laughs> Boy, you get your ass up out of here. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Hey, let's get ready to drop these phone lines, man. Y'all know what time it is. You want to talk some shit? Call me. Start some shit, bitch. Sup, fool? You gonna talk shit about me, homie? Where you from? Hundreds of niggas is waiting for your motherfucking call, and they all talking shit about you right now. Call the coach at 530-494-9636. We waiting on your bitch ass. I want to share this with you guys right quick, right? Before I answer the phones, I want to share this with you guys right quick. Let me do this. Um, I want you guys to hear this interview. Hear this interview right quick. I, you know, it's, 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 it's very short. It's very short. I want y'all to hear this, though. Here you go right here. Let me, I want you guys to hear this. Tell me, tell me what do you think about... Uh, Question. Has public perception with Canelo fans starting to change as it relates to Canelo's position about David Benavidez? Well, Jose Sr., David Benavidez's father, seemed to think so. What do you think? Did you hear Canelo say that David does not bring anything to the table and then he fights Munguia? David has proven more than Munguia at 168. When you hear $200 million to fight David, when you hear 25 pounds, when you hear all these things, those are just excuses, man. He doesn't want to face David. You know, he's trying to look now. Call hold on. All the fans that Canelo ha had are going to our side because we know that we're warriors. They know that that we want to give them the fight that they want, you know, but Canelo doesn't want to do that. So at the end of the day, everybody's losing faith in Canelo. Question. All right, so y'all heard, y'all heard what Jose, y'all heard what Jose said. Position hmm. about David Benavidez. I'm tripping. Oh my well, bad. Well, what is Jose Senior, David Benavidez's father. Y'all heard what Jose said. Jose said that the people are starting to lose faith in Canelo. He's saying that hey man, um, Canelo fans are starting to wake up. They start to come on their side now. And we had a couple of Canelo fans call the show. We're like, man. I it, it hurt them to say it. They're like, man, Coach, man, the man ducking, man. He ducking. You get what I'm saying? So, and then with a, now we're hearing, no, they're going to fight in September. The Saudis going to pay Canelo $150 million, guaranteed. So he, he's a smart businessman. And I'm like, where y'all hearing this shit at? Like, can anybody give me any proof? I, I don't want no inspect the gadget shit. I don't want no, no, see what it is now, shit. I figured it out. I don't want no shit you figured out. Can anyone show me any proof or anything tangible to support that, hey, the Saudi's going to get this man $150 million guaranteed to make this fight happen? Anybody? Carla, what's your name? Where you calling from? Tony from Boston. Tony from Boston. Talk to me. What's good, Coach, man? How's everything, man? Everything good, brother. That's what's up. Um, yeah, so I don't know if you you if you touched on um, Benavidez's manager. He did an interview, I think it was earlier today. He's basically saying, you know what, um, one hundred fifty million million dollar might be feasible, and he's they saying doing like a complete three sixty thing. Canelo, he ain't mad at Canelo asking for one hundred fifty, and if they could possibly. Five hundred fifty million, but they just gonna you know they just need time. Now, as crazy as that sounds, there's actually precedence for this. I know people don't like the comparison to you know w you know what, what Floyd did, you know especially during the whole Pacquiao negotiations. But uh, I, I I looked through that phase. You know I was I, I was in the chats in, in back then. You he had a comment on you know what I'm saying on online and. And so on and so forth. But I remember Mayweather getting killed for basically demanding from top rank a hundred million dollars and all of the pay per view shares. I kid you not, man. This article's on it. I mean, it might sound like ancient history right now because you know we say we live in you know the time like you know something happens yesterday. Sorry, we forgot moving the news, but 
this is all researchable right now. You can go look it up. Floyd Mayweather, back in 2010, asked, demanded $100 million in all of the revenue share from Pacquiao and turned down a $50 million offer with a 45-55 split, pay-per-view split by top rank. Now, what's crazy, we got some of the same people that was actually defending Floyd, you know, down talking Canelo and calling Canelo. I mean, I, I agree. It's a strategic duck move by Canelo, just as it was a strategic duck move by Floyd. What I can't understand is the hypocrisy. Why well, can't? Well, I could understand it, you know, because everybody, you know what I'm saying, they cape for their favorite fighter, you know, it, rather than, you know, caping for the sport of boxing. But it, it, again, it just it just amazes me, and I laugh at it now because you know I see you know some of the same people that was that was, that was not necessarily see, but I know the sentiment that when well, Floyd did it, oh Floyd, Floyd got every right to do that. Floyd was the money man. I got you know it. what I'm saying? We got other calls. Call That's me, my man. call, man. All right, salute, fam. Thank, hey, thank you for calling us, so, man. Shout out to Tony for Boston. <laughs> All right, so. <laughs> So the conclusion of what he said, he he said he said that Canelo was ducking. All right. So Tony say Canelo's ducking, but he say it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a strategic duck move. Okay. So we got that down. That that's that's the conclusion. That, the conclusion he said he was ducking. Now, um, this is the thing, right? Um, I wasn't on the internet around that time when the Canelo and the uh, I mean the the Floyd and the Manny Pacquiao. I wasn't I wasn't around. I heard it was crazy. I heard it was crazy, but I heard they had race wars going on and blacks against Filipinos and uh, call it, hold on. It was a whole lot going on. I wasn't I wasn't here around that time. You get what I'm saying? So it is what it is. But um, I'm saying as of right now, the, the brother concluded that, yeah, it's, this is a, a, a strategic duck move. And he sounded like he's a Canelo fan, but he's saying it's, it's ducking for a reason. Um, call it, what's the name of the caller from? Hey, doing coach. This is Adolfo from Sacktown. Adolfo from Sacktown. Talk to me. I think Benavidez will be officially vindicated whenever he gets that fight with Canelo. But uh, at the same time, I've been saying it about, uh, I said this before about Samson, man. Now he's switching narratives, agreeing with Canelo. Yeah, he deserves 150 mil, 200 million. I don't know if he's bullshitting or he actually means that. I mean, what, what do you think, Coach? Jose, Jose saying something totally different, though. Jose is saying something totally Jose Senior is saying something totally different. I know I heard what Samson said, but Jose is saying something totally different. He's like, look, man. <laughs> You know, we don't think we ever gonna get that fight. Well, even if even even if he do get 150 million dollars, he'll, he'll find another. He'll find something else or another reason not to fight. So this is what Jose is saying. Um, uh, Samson Lewis is saying something different from Jose. So it is what it is. Um, there's a conflicting story there, but the fact of the matter is, there's no fight. There's no fight, and a lot of a lot of the fans, a lot of people are believing, turning on Canelo, saying that he's ducking. So that's irregardless of what Samson Lua would say, PapaJohn.com say, Donkey Kong say, the reality of the situation is Canelo said that he wants 150 to 200 million dollars, something that he's never asked for before to fight any fighter since he's been breathing. But he wants this amount of money to fight David Benavidez. So there's a reason why he wants this much to fight, fight this one guy. So um, that's the reality of the situation. So it, it is, it is yeah, what it is as related to that. Yeah, that's true. And you're right. And yeah, of course, you're right. Also, right about another thing as well. That Saudi rumors never existed at all. Yeah. It was just what Canelo. They were, they were coming up with what Canelo said about the 150 million, 200 million dollars. Uh, so yeah, no, there's no, there is no official offer at all. Well, I mean, we'll see. Because right now the Saudis are focused on Usyk, Fury, and then Bivol Berdabia. So yeah. they're not focused on anything other than those two fights. But anyway, that's my call, Coach. All right, salute, man. Shout out to Adolfo. Sack time in the building. Sack time. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you get what I'm saying? Like, I don't, like, again, I don't, I'm hearing this stuff. Yeah, man, she what it is, man. She a smart baby move. The Saudis gonna come, the Saudis gonna come and come up with the money. And I'm like, where y'all getting this from? Like, where is this coming from? I haven't heard anything from, see, Turkey Alice. See, no, see, he, Turkey Alice, she can't say nothing. They see, they got something going on in the background, see, in the background. I'm like, oh, it's in the background. Well, if it's in the background, how did you find out about it? <laughs> true, true, true. <laughs> hey, hey, you know, nah, coach, see. Oh, um, call, call hold on. Nah, coach, see, you don't, you don't know how the business of boxing work. Okay, cool. See, it's a lot going on in the background. Okay, if it's going on in the background, please explain this to me. 
How, 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 do, how do you know about it? How did you find out about it? What you mean? What you mean how I found out about it? What, what, what you mean? You get what I'm saying? Hey, you know, you know I, I, got, I got sources. I got, you got sources. I'm like, how do you? Okay, but if it's going on in the background, and I, listen, I, you get what I'm saying? Like, how do you find out about it? That's all I'm trying to say. That's all I'm trying to say. Um, Carla, what's the name you calling from? Hey, Coach. I'm uh, Raul from Phoenix, Arizona. You say Raul? Yeah, from Phoenix. Raul from Phoenix. Talk to me, fam. Yo, what's up, man? So, I'm a, first off, I'm a huge fan, dude. This is my first time calling. I'm such a big fan of yours. You're the most unbiased channel on the on entire YouTube Man, I appreciate you, man. I really appreciate that, brother. We're trying, you know what I mean. I got, you know, we got, we got some haters. We got some haters too. Now, people don't like me, you know, and it, and it may be justifiable, but oh. I, I try my best. I try my best. Ah, uh, dude, I was going back and forth with Dante Nation the other day for for calling Ryan Garcia cherry pick for Devin Haney, and he came at me because I'm Mexican. So imagine that. But <laughs> I appreciate you, man. You keep it unbiased for everyone. Hell yeah! So just real quick, I mean, uh. So I've known David for a minute, well, not me personally, but I trained at a gym where all these people, they used to train back at Central Boxing Gym out here in Phoenix with him back when he was the Iron Boy. And uh, I'm not going to be naming names or nothing in case he hears, but, like, I think we're all on the same page of uh, with you and Rick Glacier that neither, neither of these two guys want this fight done. I mean, uh, regardless of the trash talk, I mean, Samson, on his last interview, he just came out and said that... Um, if, if Canelo offered it for September, that he wouldn't take it because it was too soon. So, and David, in a recent comment on his Instagram, told everyone, it. "Don't be uh, surprised if the fight happens on uh, on uh, September." Yeah, I saw that. And obviously, you know, Canelo. I think I don't. I don't know if he want. I don't think he wants to fight him, but maybe he will towards the end of his career when he doesn't really care if he takes another L. <clears throat> I don't think he would if he fought David at this point, but in the future, I think he would. Yeah, the only the only thing is the only thing is with that is do you do you so do you think that David Benavidez has been vindicated? Like, um, the, the, there's a lot of people like when I'm when I'm seeing seeing people on Sports Center with ESPN and just people people who I know that are dog hard. Bro, check this out. Check this out. Check this out. Showbiz the adult, die hard. Canelo fan. Canelo can't do no wrong. Nesta Gibbs of the Boxing yep. Voice. Die hard Canelo fan. Like they would defend the Canelo to the ends yep. of the earth. And I must love, must love the both of those brothers. You know, I, I, I rock with Ness. I must love the both of those brothers. When they come out and say yep. that Canelo was ducking, I'm like, bro, I'm like, what? I got a, I got a, I got a video on a shoot on it. I'm like, what? I, I was shocked. Like, damn, so be saying he ducking? Showbiz. Nessa Gibbs saying they ducking? Oh my God. Like, bro, like, I say the world don't turn upside down. So for them to say that, I that, feel you, that bro. told me a lot. That told me yep. a lot. All right, but shout out to Oh, yeah. You know, I think it's, uh, uh, no, no, I'll let you get to it, bro. So I'll, I'll get you back on YouTube. I appreciate the call. Hopefully, I get to talk to you next time. Yeah, you will, man. Just call the show, man. You, you can call the show, man. I, I got you, man. Shout out to Raul, man. Phoenix, stand up. <laughs> Hey. Right, hey, listen, well, I was shocked. I say, damn, is that? No, that ain't done. That ain't no, hold on. Hold on, that ain't, that ain't no Ness. That can't be Ness. That got to be a clone. No, that ain't Ness. That was a clone. <laughs> that, that, that was the same clone. That was the same clone. That, 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 uh, shout out to um, VFR. He said, Rolling KO's TI inside three rounds. Okay. Um, uh, shout out to, I don't know what that got to do with the show, but uh, shout out to uh, the one Mr. Ham. Hey, okay. Dropping that quarter of a dub on your boy. He said, Canelo was a great boxer. However, due to Benavidez, the duck walk, uh, you know, uh, should be called doing the Nello. Also, love, love when the show goes off. He said, goes off the rails, coach. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, what you say? You say, however, due to Benavidez, the duck walk should be called doing the Canelo. Oh, okay, the duck walk. <laughs> yeah, them duck walks, boy. Hey, mean leg exercise. Duck walks. Listen, I'm finna tell y'all. I'm finna tell y'all, right? I'm I'm the superset king. 
I love, I love supersetting everything, right? Now, I haven't been supersetting lately. Shout out to Jackie Hernandez. But, 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 but when I'm working out, working out, nigga, it's, we, we do a drop sets. They call them, some people call them drop sets, supersets. Supersets when you hit going back to back to back, right? This is, this is my leg workout. Leg lunge. One side of the room. Come back. You go down and you come up. Leg lunge. One side of the room. Leg lunge is good for stretching. Then you come back, duck walk. You duck walk back. Then you go to the squat bar and you do 25 body squats. Anywhere from 20 to 25. Then you get under the rack. You have 145 on there. 145 on there, right? That's, that's 245s on the plate. 45 on one side, 45 on the other side. Then you get on the squat rack and you squat. Go down in the bucket 15 times and come up. That's one set. True, true. True. That's one set. Chest, super set. Bench, dumbbell presses, uh, butterfly. You do, you, 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 do, you do, you do, you do the wide, you do the wide butterfly presses. Then you do the dumbbell press right behind it. You drop down. Uh, you drop down. No, you finish it with the push-ups. After you do that, you get on the bar. You get on the, you get on the bar. You do your reps. On the, on the bar, probably like 135. You do your reps on the bar, yeah, 135. You do your reps on the bar, and then after you do the reps on the bar, you probably do like 10 reps, and then you drop down and do about anywhere from 15 to 20 push ups. That's one set. True, true, true. Super set everything, right? Super set everything. Shout out to uh, NHA dropping that quarter of a dog. Hey, okay. He says, Tony from Boston. He said, Hey, coach, I'm no Nello fan. Just pointing out the double standard. It's wrong, but the president's. Uh, to what uh, Canelo's doing? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying you are, you a Canelo fan. Well, I don't know. If I did, if I did say it, that's the way I, I probably took it. I do apologize for that, but it is what it is. But you, you get what I'm saying? That's pretty much. That's pretty much. I, I, you know, I guess what's going on as it relates to this situation. I think David Benavidez is kind of being vindicated. A lot of people are seeing it on his. A lot of people are seeing it his 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 way. They like, look, man. I, 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 again, that somebody called the show and he said the worst thing that happened with Canelo was when he told the reporter he needed 150 to 200 million dollars. So the question comes about what is it about this guy to where you need more money than you ever been paid before in your life, but you don't need that kind of money to fight Jaime Mugil. You didn't need that kind of money to fight Demetri Baval. You didn't need that kind of money to fight John Ryder. But this guy, you need that that kind of money for. So you know, I, it is what it is. A lot of people. I've been hearing it from a lot of people. I'm talking about experts that's been in the game for a while. And when you hear, listen, Carla, hold on. When you hear Nesta Gibbs, shout out to Ness, and Showbiz the Adult, and I got the receipts. I had the receipts. Say that. Matter of fact, I'm going to play it. I'm going to play it. Fuck it. I'm going to play it. Because I don't want nobody thinking I'm lying on these boys. I don't want nobody thinking I'm lying on these dudes now. I don't want nobody thinking I'm lying. I got it. I don't want nobody thinking I'm lying. Hold on. Let me, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Can I pull this up? I, you know, I was, I was shiggity shocked. I was shocked. So I'm like, God damn, dude. Shit. I don't, you know. Um, um, Carla, what's your name? Where you calling from? Martin from Oakland. Martin from Oakland. Talk to me. Yeah, coach. Um, you asked the question, uh, why would he want, uh, 150 mil to fight Benavides when he never asked for that much to fight everybody else? I mean, I'm, I'm just looking at it from a business standpoint. If a third loss is more than Canelo can bounce back from, then you take the easy fights like he took with Triple G, like he took with all these other cats, and you fight the hardest motherfucker at the end. That way, if you beat your ass, you go home with a nice little payday. Other than that, there's really, you know, there's really no difference. A loss is a loss, but you might as well cash in at the end. I mean, look at look at what Floyd did. He fought, you know, fought Pacquiao towards the end, and he made a killing. He quadrupled what everybody thought he would have made if he would have fought him sooner. It sucked for us because we didn't get prime Manny versus prime Pacquiao. Just like so, you so know, you assuming so you assu so, so you assuming that 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 uh, Canelo's going to lose. So you're saying that. If, if I'm if I'm if I'm if I'm if I'm saying this correctly, what you're saying is Canelo understands that this guy David Benavidez is a serious threat, and, and, and so he wants to be compensated handsomely just in case he loses to this guy who he's perceiving as a serious threat. Is that what you're saying? I mean, he is fighting a bigger, younger fighter, so 
I mean, the odds aren't in his favor. I mean, what's one advantage other than the experience that Canelo has over Benavides? He doesn't have any. He doesn't have the reach. He doesn't have the hand speed. He doesn't, he, he's basically flat footed. So what, what, you know, all this boxing IQ and all this other shit, you could be the, you know, you could be a rocket scientist, but you know, that don't mean too much when you got a bigger man, you know, punching on you. You feel me? So you always got to have that in the back of your mind. Hey, this motherfucker might be the one to whoop my ass, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, you know, I mean, it is what it is, man. All right, but shout out to Mark from Oakland, man. Salute, fam. Hold on, let me, let me find, let me, let, 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 let me find, let me find the showbiz deal, though. Cause I, I don't want nobody thinking I'm capping. They like, man, that nigga here capping, man. Man, they, they, they ain't said that. They ain't said that. They ain't go right there. They go showbiz right there. Let me see, can I pull them up? Uh... Lord have mercy. Matter of fact, now, I'm going to give you, I'm going to put some context to this. Showbiz the Adult is a diehard Saul Canelo Alvarez fan. You don't get no more diehard than him. And Nesta Gibbs is a diehard, diehard Saul Canelo Alvarez fan. You don't get no more diehard than them. And they got big platforms and they represent for Canelo to the fullest. Right? Um, Carla, hold on. So when I, when I hear them say Canelo ducking, I'm like, damn. Because you can't label them with, oh, them are just some haters. Nessa Gibbs ain't no hater of a Canelo. Showbiz Zildo is not a hater of Canelo. So you can, you know, you can dismiss, oh, them, oh, them just some haters. No, nah, those some dudes that got some big platforms that are like, man, look here, man, this shit, man. I don't defend it, this shit, long as I could, dog. But right now, dog, this, boy, this shit looking crazy. I don't, I don't know what to say. My back is up against the wall. You get what I'm saying? So that's where I said, I got the receipts right here. I'm going to play it. Call her, what's your name? you call her from? What up, Coach? Marco714. Marco714, talk to me. Let's get it out of the way, Coach. First and foremost, it's a duck. It hurts me to say it, you know, as a boxing fan, not so much as a Canelo fan, but it's a duck. And let me tell you, Coach, something's going on because the fact that Benavides' uh, manager, Lakowitz, whatever his name is, comes out and he's like, yeah, yeah, you know, Canelo should get as much as he can. He deserves it. Mm -hmm. It's almost like, like they know, you know what? Let's 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 make a play for the big time. Let's make a play, and hopefully, we get some of the Saudi money, and we all get paid. And if that doesn't happen, then I guess it, there's no option but to fight here. But either way, coach, I don't think the problem is that Canelo is ducking; it's how he is ducking. Because now he's just plain and simple, run out of excuses. Mm. Everything he said, Benavides might have the advantage for it. Canelo has done it to other people. No fucking problem. And to be honest with you, I, I, I kind of agree with the last caller. I think Canelo wants to get the biggest payday for his last fight. And if you think about it, coach, it's a win-win for him. If he goes out and he gets beat or they beat him, they knock him out. Everybody's going to say, man, you know what? Canelo went out on his shield. He made the biggest payday. He walked into the sunset. Mm -hmm. Now, let's say he wins, coach. Let's say he wins. Canelo be a fucking an all-time great. Why? Because he beat the man who everybody thought he didn't want to fight, made a shitload of money, and retired. Now, let me ask you something, coach. As that fight was signed, sealed, delivered, as of right now, who would you put as favorite? Oh, David Benavidez. Who would you think be David favorite? Benavidez all day, seven days a week, and twice on Sunday. I, 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 I agree. I agree with you, Coach. And it's pretty interesting because everybody, you know, thinking that Canelo has that experience on him. But you know, you know what they say: will beat skill, Coach. So, yeah, Coach, that's my call. Thank you. I shout out to Marco seven one four. So. <laughs> So Marco714 said it's a duck. So I got that down. He said it's a duck. See, see I'm, I'm looking at the summary. Okay. You, uh, the summary. Okay. So you, you say duck. Okay. The duck. Uh, he said he say duck. All right. Let's go here to showbiz the adult. Lord have mercy. Boy, this shocked the hell out of me, boy. Let's shout out, shout out to showbiz. Shout out to showbiz. Shout out to showbiz. 
the most embarrassing duck I've ever seen because Canelo Alvarez is one of the greatest fighters of all time. And a duck of this magnitude makes Canelo Alvarez, in my opinion, the Call biggest on. duck in the history of boxing. Riddick Bowe, duck, was the biggest, but no longer. Because Riddick Bowe is one of the greatest fighters of all time. When you think of one of the greatest fighters of all time, Riddick Bowe, don't jump to your head. Now you think of one of the greatest heavyweights of the 90s, then yeah, you gotta think about Riddick Bowe. But Canelo Alvarez, duck at David Benavidez, this obvious biggest duck in history. Hey, man. Hey, look. Canelo Alvarez. It is definitely hey, man. the most embarrassing. Canelo fans, that's your boy. Showbiz now. That's your boy. That's your boy now. Showbiz. Oh, I, hold on. I got another one. I'm finna, hold on. I'm finna, I'm finna hit you with back to back. I'm finna hit you with doggone what Nesta Gibbs say. Yeah, that, that's your boy now. That is, just want to throw that out there. Carla, what's your name? You call it from Leo H Town. Leo H Town, talk to me. This is what haters don't understand, Coach Floyd. They didn't say he needed a hundred million to fight Pack, and that he was going to make two hundred million to fight Pack because he was scared. He said it because us, the fans, kept saying. Floyd's going to lose to Pac. Pac's going to beat Floyd. Floyd's scared of Pac. So he said, oh, y'all want me to fight him that bad? Here's the price. Here's what I need. It's the same thing Canelo's doing. Oh, it's not that he's scared. Not, no, is it y'all think he can beat me? Y'all say he's unbeatable. Y'all say that's the guy that's got my number. Well, here's the price. You want to see him? Here's the price. Pay the price. You say, hey, if he, well, he can beat me that bad, and you'll pay the price. That's all he's doing. Same thing as Floyd. It's the only difference. Is you, what's that? For this two times, Paul says, it's, it's okay when they do it, but they got a problem when I do it. That's what's going on. So, 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 are you, so, are, so are you saying that Canelo was ducking this guy until he get the money he want? Are you no, saying no, no, no. Are you saying he's not ducking? A, a duck is, I don't want to fight him. No, he's saying, you say he could beat me, pay me his money. That's how Floyd said. You think Pac could beat me? Pay me this money. Did you did you hear the interview? Did you hear the interview that Canelo gave at um at that at the Jaime Mugil press conference? He said they, they, yeah, asked, they, asked, they asked him. They said, "Hey man, you know uh, what? Nope. When are you going to fight David Benavidez?" He you know he said, "What can what what can David Benavidez uh, offer you to, to fight?" Hold on, him out, him out. I'll let you talk. What, what can David Benavidez offer you to fight him? He said he offered me nothing, nothing. He offered me nothing. You know what I mean? What does he offer me? You know he has nothing to offer me. You know and he, he said that. You know he you know he ain't fighting this dude. You know, maybe, maybe if someone was to say promoter, whoever I be working with at that time, say, "Hey, we'll pay you 150 million, 250, 200 million dollars." Then yes, I fight him tomorrow. Uh -huh. So, so that's what he said, fam. Like, coach, no, y'all skipping, y'all skipping the first part of the interview. Y'all going to that? Okay. No, Avery says, "Hey, what about you and those 60 million that they asked? Why did you duck David?" I heard it. And Canelo got Canelo got pissed off. He said. 60 million. They didn't offer 60 million. Before that, they said they offered 100 million, 200 million. Where's the money? You're going to pay me 200 million? Pay me 200 million, I'll fight him. That's what he said. Yeah, yeah take it yeah. out of concept. He said yeah, that yeah. of being pissed off. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, the interview yeah. said, you know, he said that's why he said 100, 200 million. Because before that, they said they had a $150 million on the table of that multi million dollar of fight that supposedly David was on that they turned down. Then they said they had a hundred million. All then right, so, they had so, okay, all right, all right, so to summarize, so, so to summarize this is this. You're saying Canelo was not ducking. You're saying that Canelo was asking for more money than he's ever asked for to fight any fighter since he's ever been no, boxing no. as a pro. And you're saying that he's not, that, that's what you're saying. You're saying he's not no, ducking, right? No, that's what you're saying, right? Both. All right, that's, no, that's, that's, said, that's all I want to know. That's all I want to know. You say, no, no, you say no, you, no. You, come on, so you got to let me tell you what he said. He, like, you can't just cut me off. Bro, I heard what he said. I heard the interview. Coach, I listened to he, it three well, times. He, he literally said, you said 100, 200 million, now give me that money. That's all he said. Okay. You said, he said, y'all said it, now give it to me. All now right. you want me to fight him, give it to me. All right, yeah, um, your point, your point well taken. Anything else you want to say, Leo? No, I'm just saying, we just getting out of context. We just asking, like, that number came out of nowhere. No, they put it out there, and he just reiterated it and said, all right, you're going to give me that? Give me that. That's the price. 
Okay. Okay. That's what that's what the reporter said. The reporter said that. So um, make a long story short, we have a we 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 just gonna agree. We just gonna agree to disagree on this here. Uh, but salute to you, found Leo H Town. Yeah, we just gonna agree to disagree on that, fam. I I get it. I get it. I get it. I understand. Trust me. I understand. I get it. I get it. I get it. Um, caller, what's the name? Where you calling from? Oh, Gerard from New York. Uh, Gerard from New York. Talk to me. I told you, Coach, that mental gymnastic is strong. I told you that them fan boys won't let go on that one, so no matter what. Canelo could go ahead and say he's scared by himself, and they'll pull up a rabbit out of their ass talking about, no, 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 no. That's not what he meant. Well, look, the, the guy's blatantly ducking. Like, there, there's this point blank. Mexico is saying it. American media is saying it. Everyone is saying it. He, 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 the guy like being confronted about shit like this. And I can send you a receipt about him pretty much. Um, there was a, 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 a guy that um, was a trainer and was training and was helping him for the Floyd fight. Uh, or have, have one of the spar, uh, one of the sparring partners but helping him for the Floyd fight, and apparently the guy pretty much told them like, "Yo, like is that, is that's how he's training because the guy was fighting in spurts, and pretty much he said like, dude, like the guy's gonna lose." And Canelo just said like, "Oh, you know, like who the fuck is this guy? Like get the fuck out." So the guy's been a diva from the start, you know, like I, is is he. Guy enough great marketing ploy to, to to make money. The guy got one, one one good fight with Triple G, and he's been clinging on to that fight harder than fucking Canelo fans have been clinging to his nuts. That's that's pretty much it. Like the guy's clearly ducking. Like there, there ain't no no excuse or question about that. And when everybody's calling you for fight, one guy, and it's been one excuse after the, after the other. There, there's, there's pretty much nowhere to go. That, that's pretty much what it is, coach. But that's uh, my call. Shout out to Gerard from New York. <laughs> also, let me let me let me let me play let me play another receipt from a pro Canelo guy. Like these are pro. Show busy adult is a pro Canelo guy. He loves Canelo. Loves him. And nobody, and I think the only person who loves Canelo more than Showbiz is Nessa Gibbs. So let's go to Nessa Gibbs. Let, let's see what Nessa Gibbs has to say. Let's see what Nessa has to say. Shout, shout out to Ness. It's a duck if you're asking for 200 million or even 150 million guaranteed. Mayweather made 180 for maybe Pacquiao or maybe McGregor, yeah. but that wasn't guaranteed up front. It wasn't like. Here's a hundred and eighty million dollar check up front before you fight. Like, I've them. never heard of that in my life watching boxing. So this has to be a duck. I can see the angle of him trying to fish for the maximum offer. And that's why he's saying anybody that wants to offer me this, I'll fight him tomorrow. But it's pretty much a duck. I don't know how you're interpreting it because uh um, well, to me, we had we disagreed. I think I don't know if you heard this, but the twenty five pound comment to me spoke volumes. I think to to Canelo, it's more about that. It's still duck. Either way, or <laughs> avoiding or whatever. But I think he's worried about that rehydration, about the fact that Canelo really is a natural 160 pounder. Because of his talent and his power, he can go to 160 and be successful. He's concerned fighting a dude who's 6'3", who's so big. I think it's... So, hey, man, so the, the, now you just heard two back-to-back -back diehard Canelo supporters. Are you going to... Are they hating? Is Showbiz the adult hating on Canelo? Is Nessa Gibbs hating on Canelo? I mean, you heard two back to back die hard, die hard Canelo fan. You don't get no more die hard than those two. Anyway, um, Carla, what's your name? You call it from Jamie from New York. Jamie from New York, talk to me. Of course, I want to ask the Canelo fans that are calling in, right? Talking nonsense. Look, Mr. Gibbs just beat me to it. You played that video. Hmm. I wanted to say to you or ask you, you know, the man wants. $200 million to fight Benavides tomorrow. Well, I'm going to ask them, how much is he getting against Munguia? That's a duck. There's no way around it. I'm a Canelo fan, okay? And I must keep it real, man. I'm not going to cap for him, and I'm not going to defend Ducky. You know? Now, if Canelo's trying to marinate this fight, then, you know, PBC and him, you know, PBC's not in on it because they love marinating fights, you know? Mm -hmm. To me now, it's trying. I think it's, it's making sense to me in my head that they're trying to lure, you know, the Saudis to pay for this fight since they're throwing all this money 
to the heavyweight, you know, I don't know if it's jealousy or whatever. They just want they just want to get paid. They're after the money. So the way he's talking, I think that's the direction they're moving mm-hmm. or hoping. But I don't know if they're going to get that call. But again, Coach, look, man, you know I'm old school and I'm probably spoiled, you know. I remember fighting, you know, I'm um, watching the Four Kings fight back in the 70s, bro. They fought everybody, man. Win or lose. They didn't care about money. You know, I never heard about these people talking about money, coach. You know what I'm saying? I watched Sugar Ray Leonard, man, fight, you know, legacy fights. That's the legacy fights, bro. And, 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 and whoever he was fighting, bro, whether they were all-time greats or not, you know, they took what they gave them, bro. They never talked about money. This ducking shit, bro, it has to stop, you know? Again, I, 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 I can't defend it, man. The man is ducky. I like Canelo, but I love boxing first. So but, but see, but see, this is this cool, is the thing, cool. right? This is the Go thing. Ahead. This is the thing. What this is what this is one uh-huh. common thing that I'm hearing from 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 a lot of Canelo fans, that hearts, right? Mm-hmm. If you say that Canelo is ducking, they dismiss it as saying you just hate no Canelo. Um, everything yeah, okay. everything is not hate. You know what I mean? Like the truth, everything is not hate. Like, um, and people have a right to feel the way they want to feel. I have no problem with that. Um, and so people be yeah. dismissive and I guess maybe that's a, t- a coping mechanism, but that's just what I've been seeing. But I got your record, Jamie. Uh, salute yeah. to you, fam. Uh, salute, brother. Shout out to Jamie. Yeah, man. Later, bro. All right, brother. Well, I get it. Bro, when you got, bro, I'm like, that's what shocked me, though. Showbiz, the adult, and, and, and Nesta Gibbs, I was like, damn. Um, Carla, what's your name? Where you call it from? What's new, Coach? Your boy, Two Tone Superstar. Please say the superstar. Two Tone the superstar, man. Talk to me, my brother. Foremost, Canelo fans, stop the cap. I know it hurts. It hurts y'all niggas, but your man is a duck. And I say that respectfully. For one, uh, to the Houston nigga, uh, David Benavidez ain't no Manny Pacquiao. Stop bringing up Floyd Mayweather. Floyd Mayweather was fighting Manny Pacquiao at that time was the second cash cow in boxing. Stop it, bro. And you say David Benavidez don't bring nothing to the table. Didn't uh didn't Canelo go to the zone to try to fight uh Edgar Belanga for the same money that he's fighting um Jaime Mogia for? That's why he ran back to Al Heyman. Yeah, voided. Um he bring nothing to the table. But Joe Rogan, one of the biggest podcasters in the world, is talking about this fight, Canelo Duncan. Yeah. One of the biggest sports personalities in the world, Stephen A. Smith, is talking about Canelo Duncan. And you're talking about 25 pounds or 20, whatever weight pounds. Was, was it a problem for you, Canelo, when you brought up uh, Amir Khan and you outweighed him 29 pounds? Was it a problem for you when you brought up Jermail, uh Hennessy, Ducey, Hypnotic Charlo from 154 pounds up to 168. Was that a problem for you, Canelo? Was it a problem for you when you secretly asked Triple G for a catch weight the first time y'all fought at 155? I don't know. Coach, keep cooking these niggas, man. Respectfully. Two tone out. Oh, so shout out to Two Tone. <laughs> The question, the question is, has David Benavidez been vindicated? Like, do you guys feel that he's been vindicated? Again, like you say, Joe Rogan, there's a lot of people talking about this here. Everybody's saying the same thing, and a lot of these guys, they, they really love Canelo. Like, I like Canelo. Canelo's a damn good fighter. You know what I mean? But um, um, but you got all these people saying the same shit. Like, this dude is decking this guy. You know what I'm hearing? I'm, I, I don't heard it all. I don't, bro, I don't heard... Every angle, every explanation you can hear. But what's very telling to me is when you uh, call, hold on. What's very telling to me is I'm like, damn, showbiz, the adult, and Nesta Gibbs. Like, eh. You get what I'm saying? I'm like, damn. Like, Ness made it compelling. Like, listen, even Floyd didn't get a $150 million guarantee. Floyd didn't get that. That was back in. That was on the strength of. Pay per view sales and stuff like that. He didn't get that guarantee and stuff like that. So this is bro for Ness to say that. I'm like, damn, dog. And I and I and I, and I saw. I'm not gonna lie. I did see the disappointing look in Ness's face. Like, like, damn, dog. Like he was kind of disappointed, but it is what it is. Uh, shout out to the boys over there, the Boston boys, though, man. Salute to Ness and, sh- and salute to Showbiz, though. Shout out to um, um, Jax, Jax V. He says so. Tyson get a hundred mil for Usyk. 
uh, but not but not Nello for D DB. I mean, I don't even know if Tyson is getting 100 million. I don't even know where the fuck that came from, to be honest with you. But what does that what does that, what does that have to do? What does that have to do with um, um? And I, hold on, I'm explaining this to you. If Tyson Fury is getting 100 million dollars, then I don't know what I don't know what Bob Arum is getting, and I don't know what Frank Warren is getting, or what Usyk is getting. But for him to ask for that type of money, that tells me that. Money that he's never asked for before, ever in the history of him being boxing, that tells me that he 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 thinks that highly of Otis and the Usi. That he really look at that guy as a very very serious threat, because you don't ask for no type, you don't ask for that type of money for fighting a pumped up middleweight. Someone that you just go smash here, pumped up middleweight. So that tells you the story right there. That tells you the story right there. Um. Anyways, shout out to Mighty King Boxing. He say he say I'm gonna give David. He said, I'm a, he said, I'm a pray David get the fight. We all should. I mean, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't praying, I ain't praying for that. I mean, if he get it, he get it. If he don't, he don't. It is what it is. Shout out to uh, Jamie Vasquez. Hey, okay. Dropping a half a dub. He said, I'm not saying he decking, but we got to play the whole interview and not just some short edited videos, especially when questions and answers in Spanish. Great show. Uh, don't, don't call, J don't let JBN call in. Okay, well, put it this way. I'm going to say this. Do he want $150, $200 million to fight David Benavidez or not? That's the question. Do he want that kind of money to fight this guy? Money that he's not getting paid to fight Jaime Mugil. Money that he didn't get paid to fight Triple G. Dane Jacobs, anybody. If that's what he want, and if that's what it's going to take, that tells you the story. Um, shout out to IML Leader. Hey, okay. Dropping that quarter of a dub. He said, it's a duck, but let's be real. David shouldn't be at 168. Okay, so you're saying it's a duck. Um, he said David shouldn't be at 168. He's a 200-pound man. Let's see what he does at 175 when he fights people closer to his size. Okay, okay, I get it, I get it, I get it. So um, this is a question I have for you. When Canelo fought David, when Canelo fought Dimitri Bavol, how much did he weigh? How much did he rehydrate to? Please come with the answer for that. Um, Carla, what's your name? Where you call it from? Yeah, Alan Maddox from L.A. Salute, Coach. Alan Maddox from L.A. Talk to him. Yeah, well, I've been telling you for years he's a duck. Canelo's been ducking. Coach Eddie, Coach Eddie put it out. He, he, he showed exactly what his record is. He fights old, old washed-up fighters with names, and he ducks for memorable opponents. Mm. And, and his uh, his apologist out there saying that uh, Canelo will take any any fight and all this stuff. Well, they say uh, Dave has nothing to bring to the table, but all of a sudden this fight's worth two hundred million. Make it make sense. Do you think? Do you think that Showbiz the adult Nesta Gibbs? Uh, do you think they're hating on Canelo for saying he's a duck? No, everybody knows that, especially Showbiz. Showbiz is a big uh, Duck Canelo apologist. Okay, that's interesting. I mean, I know your position, Alan. I know you said that um he, he's ducking. So, um, anything else you want to um add to it, brother? Before I let you let you go. Nah, but I want I want to give a shout out to the Wookie Wook. I saw him on uh on Blue Blood yesterday. Oh, Wookie Wook. Yeah, debate with Blue Blood. <laughs> that brother had me cracking up, man. <laughs> he was trying to defend Tank the way these dudes tried to defend Canelo. He got put in a corner. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Wookie Wook, boy, Wookie Wook funny, corner, I like, I like Wookie Wook, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was a cool interview, but he said, damn, Blue, why you put me in the corner? He goes, you were in the corner the second you got in this, in this ring. <laughs> 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 All right, man. Shout out to L.A. Meadows, man. L.A. stand up. Hey, hey, dog going on. I am your leader say, he said, it's a duck. <laughs> <laughs> he said, but let's be real. David shouldn't be at 168 pounds. He's a 200-pound man. He's a weight bully. He shouldn't be there. He need to be at 175. Well, apparently he's moving up to 175, and they say he's going to come back down, so we'll see. Shout out to Jamie Vasquez. He said, if I'm going to get my ass beat, I'll ask for that, I'll ask for that money too. But it, it, it's conflicting. Let me tell you what's conflicting about it. Um, Jamie, because in one breath, you hear Tyson Fury say, oh, you know, a whore there. 
Oh, uh, call, hold on. Ahoy there, shiver me timbers. There's not a man born from me, Pappy's loins. That can beat the Gypsy King. Only Zander Usak. He, he, he's a pumped up middleweight. I'll destroy him. So you say all of that. He's a, he's a pumped up middleweight. I'll destroy him. This is going to be one of the easiest fights I've ever had in my life. Hey, well, okay, uh, Tyson, what's it going to take for you to make that fight? Hey, man, I need about 100 million to fight him. True, <laughs> true, true. So let me get this straight. You fought what y'all said was the hardest hitting puncher in the history of the heavyweight division, uh, Deontay Wilder. Which is some bullshit, but I'm just going to rub it that narrative. You fought the guy who was the best heavyweight in the history of boxing. He would have beat Ali. Deontay Wilder would have beat Sonny Liston. He would have beat Tyson. He would have beat doggone Mike Tyson. He would have beat doggone you know, Ron Lyles, Ernie Shavers, Larry Holmes. He would have beat Lennox Lewis like he was that vicious. He hit a one time with the right hand. Bam. Everybody going to sleep. So you, so Deontay Wilder was that much of a threat. You didn't ask for a hundred million to fight him, but the guy that's smaller, the pumped up middleweight, the little guy, you want a hundred million to fight him. Make that make sense? True, true, true. See if you let them talk long enough, they tell on themselves. Anyways, um, call him. What's your name? Where you calling from? What's happening, Coach? This is Coach Eddie from the ATL. Coach Eddie, talk to me, fam. Yes, sir. It's day number three of Canelo Rose, and I'm glad and I'm able to witness well, this and be a part when of When are we it. talking about David Benavidez? Do you feel that David Benavidez has been vindicated? Absolutely. He's been vindicated 100% because now everybody knows and Canelo's been exposed and he just don't want to fight the guy. I got two points that I want to make. Uh, you remember fighting when uh, they, uh, ben David Benavidez fought Ronald Ellis and Kyron Davis. Mm. These are two guys that David Benavidez has destroyed. Those are also two guys who kick Canelo's butt in sparring on a constant basis. Those are Canelo's main sparring partners. Ronald Ellis, he has a little brother named Speedy Rashidi Ellis, Speedy Rashidi, and also yeah. Kyron Davis. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and Canelo already sees that they beat his butt in sparring constantly, and David Benavidez has destroyed him. Canelo wants no part of this guy. How do you know Another this, sir? point I okay. want to make. Before, before you get to the second part, you say they were beating him in sparring. How do you know this? Where, where, where did you hear that from? Well, you know I've been around the game a minute, Coach. You know, I know I know a few things. And you know, I'm the one that told you that it's supposed <laughs> that Canelo was still in all the sparring partner movies from the black guy. I'm the one that brought that news to you. That Booker Ray Leonard said the same thing I said. <laughs> so I know for a fact that Ronald Ellis and, and Kyron Davis and Speedy Rashidi Ellis be <laughs> beating Canelo but in charge. <laughs> <laughs> I Speedy know Rashidi. this. <laughs> 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 and, and his brother Ronald Ellis, they give Canelo the business. And what David Benavidez did, he destroyed Canelo, or he did destroy Ronald Ellis and Kyron Davis. They put up a pretty decent fight, but at the end result was they got stopped. Right. Second point I want to make that a lot of these Canelo protectors like to bring up is the Floyd and Manny Pacquiao uh, fight. Well, look how much money they made. They got to remember that Pacquiao had survived with years of legendary fights. Mm. Floyd Mayweather had provided us with years of legendary entertaining fights and putting on some of the biggest fights in history. Floyd Mayweather, when he when he fights Las Vegas, Las Vegas shuts down. He's an economy by himself, so he brings, they warned that because they actually was killing, they was eating what they killed. Mm -hmm. That money that they generated, that's actually money that the people paid to see. Mm -hmm. $200 million for Canelo, you're going to take a loss. Yeah, that, that's when the pay-per-views was really popping back then. Like, this era, uh, that's when the pay-per-view money was really popping uh, back then, so... Um yeah, yeah, it was. That's when people were really buying pay per views. They were streaming a little bit too, but they were mm -hmm. really buying pay per views at that time. It was jumping then. It was like the good time rolls then. It's kind of different yeah. now. Yeah, and and they, they they still had some high guarantees too back then. But you know, they they made a lot of money because they a lot of they sold a lot of pay per views. Anybody that pays Canelo two hundred million dollars, they're going to take a financial blood bath. That fight's not going to generate two hundred million dollars worth of pay per views. And I don't even want the fight because I don't want Canelo to have that type of money. I don't want to see Canelo get beat that bad where well, we got to pay him $200 million. I already seen this sucker lose already. I already know he all about it. It don't matter to me. It don't matter to me. I already know what's going to happen. 
I don't want the fight to happen. I don't want Canelo to touch none of them seconds. I would just keep fighting well. Keep cherry picking. Keep doing what you've been doing. Don't try to switch up now. I already seen you lose already. So it ain't, it ain't nothing new to me. So you don't want to see Canelo get paid. So how, how much? I want to. So, okay. Uh, since we talk about money, how much David Benavidez is going to get paid then? If, if Canelo will get 150 well, million about it, man. or 200 million, what David Benavidez is going to get? Is anybody going to pay him? <laughs> they gonna ch- you know Canelo you know Canelo going to chump him off. Canelo <laughs> probably get a man $8 million. Probably get a man $10 million. He's going to keep the rest. That, that, ain't, that ain't no good, Coach. That ain't even fair, man. Hey, hey, you know, I'm just saying, you know, I mean, that's what, you know, I mean, okay, so, so we going out of, he said, we going out of this rabbit hole of fantasy and promoting, okay, how much the salt is, okay, they say the salt is going to get involved, right? That's what they say. Could the people be throwing these crazy numbers out there, like these multi-millionaires and billionaires, they just going to throw money away. So, the question I have for everybody this year, we got this $150 million, $200 million question out there, right? What the salt is going to make? Oh, well, they got all money, coach. They just going to throw the money out there. They don't care now about making no money. They just losing money. Like these dudes, these Saudis are hundreds. They got hundreds of millions of dollars and billions of dollars. They don't make that kind of money being foolish. And, but everybody know, yeah, they, what they going to do, they going to throw, they just going to throw, throw the two, two, three, 200 million out there, coach. They got plenty of money. And I'm like, okay, so where you heard that from? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, see, I know, see, see what it is, see, Coach, that ain't, that ain't, I'm like, <laughs> this shit is crazy, <laughs> so I'm like, and I'm just saying for me, I know I'm a small business owner myself, so I'm nowhere near on that level, but these guys, these fanagers, they throwing these numbers out there, and so it's $50, $5, $20, $30, I'm like, okay, well, I don't know, Um, before I let you go, let me ask you this, do you feel that so be is the adult, good brother, Nessa Gibbs, good brother. Did you feel that they hate they, they was hating on Canelo by saying he's ducking? No, sir. I believe they call him the right there in the middle, man. Showbiz has been around a long time. And he's been around a long time. He's Canelo, one of Canelo's biggest supporters. But yeah, is, at the end of the day, man, everybody's saying it. They been, I'm glad that they roasting this clown, man. He deserves he deserve all these coals being heaped on his head right now. And I hope they continue to heat coals on his head. And I hope Jaime Munguia knocked this clown out too. That way I can have something else to laugh about. I'm the ultimate Canelo hater. He's done nothing for the sport and I'm going to stand on that. But that's my call, Coach. Alright, shout out to Coach Eddie. ATL. What thing about Coach Eddie now? Coach Eddie, Coach Eddie is consistent with his hate. Down from the bar, there's a platform stage. People prepping Hey, Coach Eddie now, when it comes to Canelo hate, Coach Eddie consistent. I hate him, Coach. I don't like the Dosey Gabbana outfit he wearing, Coach. I don't like I don't I don't like the fact he making all his money, Coach. I don't like the private jet he getting on, Coach. I don't like them tenderonies that want to talk to him because he got money. I don't like the Mexican market the cartel who backing them, Coach. I don't like none of that. I'm um, calling what's your name when you call it from? Man, you already know. It's never. It's D Block, D Town, D City, D Ville, Baltimore. D Block, talk to me. That, now, now, Coach, you you already know. We we know what he's coming with. He's coming with hate, but no facts. <laughs> we know this, Coach. We know this. It's just hate. It's just hate. That's all it is. Hate, 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 hate. But see the difference here. Uh, I know Baltimore's finest, Tank Davis, Joaquin Davis, Bobblehead, the little man of the decade. We know that he's factually not the face of boxing. We know that the hate should be on that side. Now they want to shift everything to Canelo, the face of boxing, because he's on top. And you telling me he don't deserve this. He don't deserve that. He hasn't brought nothing to the sport. Last time I remember, he's been doing great pay-per-view numbers. Last time I remember, he has a Hall of Fame career. Last time I remember, he got the whole country behind him. Last time I remember, you just can't stop talking about it. That's all I know. What you got to say with that, my brother? Yeah, we can't stop talking about Canelo. Uh, can't stop talking about Tank. Uh, uh, Ryan yeah, Garcia. Yeah, you get what I'm saying? You know, yeah, faces yeah. of boxing. Yeah, but the difference here. Yeah. The difference here, Coach, you know this. <laughs> the difference is we cannot compare Tank Davis to Canelo Alvarez. We why know you, that. Why you bring Tank Davis, up, though? Tank Davis bring... is like the dollar store. We... He is like the dollar store, Coach. He is like when you go to the dollar store and you try to get the cheapest shit and you know you in there and you're trying to, get, you're trying to save some money. So, yeah, yeah. That is Tank Davis. 
Canelo Alvarez is more like Target. You know what I mean? More like Walmart. You know, you go in there, you know, you, you know, you know, you're getting something back. You're getting great action. You go co- competition, competition. It ain't just I'm a pick. I'm a pick more gear because I know it's gonna be an easy fight. It's gonna be a tough fight. Come on, coach. You know Canelo Alvarez always brings out the best out of his own competition. They come for it. They ain't scared. Now the only scared black black trick fighter was Charlo. That's Houston's problem. That's not our problem, coach. They need to go slap him around. I mean, yeah, am I right, coach? That Ken Davis is the softest competition out there compared to Canelo Alvarez. Tell me something, Coach. Tell me something. Listen, listen, listen. Why are we? Why are you changing the subject to Tank? We, we, um, do we asking? Has is, has is David Benavidez? Has he been vindicated? You don't call the show. Oh, and oh, I, I got two questions. Oh, uh, hold on, hold on. I, w- I want you to summarize oh, it now. I want you to summarize yeah, it. Yeah, has, yeah, has, yeah, has, yeah, yeah. Has David Benavidez has been 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 vindicated? And my next question is: Do you feel that Showbiz the adult and Nesta Gibbs? Do you feel they hating on Canelo by saying he duck it? Well, uh, I'm gonna tell you like this: Has Benavides been vindicated? No, yes, his own his own person that that's right there with him, Samson Lukowicz. Already, and I told you this, coach. I said it to you last night. Mm. He already posted and said Canelo deserves 200 million or 150 million dollars. Okay. Yes, he does. He's doing a smart move. So we know that he's not vindicated because if your own person in your camp is telling is telling everybody else that he deserves that money, but your own dad. And yourself as a fighter is saying he don't deserve that, then that's telling you, Doc, you got somebody, if somebody, it's being a hypocrite in there. There's being two faces. So you need to look at that, coach. He's not vindicated at all. At all. And, and about, uh, Nez and, and about, uh, show busy adult, which always looks like he's getting hit in the ass. His eyes always popping. I don't know, coach. <laughs> I never liked the guy. I never respect the guy. The guy's always talking shit like he, he knows about boxing. At the end of the day, he's always with his little robes and on coffee, trying to drink coffee. Man, get out of here, man. You ain't shit. At the end of the day, man, but he lo- he's but coming he's a, with it. With but the showbiz is a diehard Canelo supporter. Well, 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 well co- coach, no, he's not. No, he's not. If he's a diehard coach, who's wearing Canelo draws and who's not? Okay, there we go. D block, D town, D city, D bill. Sorry, D block. Sorry, D block. Hey, look here, man. Hey, bro, like, look. But you see, hey, listen. You saw this switching out. You, but listen. But you saw this switching out on um on the um uh, uh, come on, man. Anyways, y'all ain't gotta like it, man. But you better respect it. Nigga, when my name come up, respect it. Let's go. Stop playing with my fucking name. All drill, y'all. Stop playing with my name. I ain't gonna say it no more. Put some respect on my name. Caller, what's your name? Where you calling from? Caller, what's your name? Where you calling from? It's Curtis from Long Beach. Curtis from Long Beach, talk to me. Man, uh, first off, uh, that's not showbiz. That's uh, Marco and Nestor. Um, Who is Marco? And then uh, Marco from Marco Boxing. I think your boy uh, Terrence had an interview with him before, but he's been a regular... Yeah, oh, 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 Marco. Yeah, I know. I know Marco. I've been on. He interviewed. I've been on this. Show yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's Marco. Um, no, 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 no. You did you did you see did you see what Showbiz the Adult said? I didn't see Showbiz, but I watched that show. That's what Marco I was talking. That's, that. that's what I was talking about. So that that that. So yeah. you 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 talk me. You 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 write about you write about Ness and Marco, but you're wrong about Showbiz because I played the video what Showbiz said as well. Oh, okay, yeah, I was listening to uh, the, the clip when you were saying that that was uh, showbiz, and I was like, that's Nestor and Marco, but no, nah, that's my mistake being my bad, bro. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, man, it, like I said, you know, yesterday, they both playing, man, because, you know, this morning, Samson say all that bullshit, and then he say uh, they won't even be ready by September, and that, it's going to play out that. just like I said. I heard that. Yeah, it's going to play out just like I said, you know. Belanga's going to be next, you know what I'm saying? Belanga's going to be in September, but Canelo said he's fighting three times this year. And I know for sure they're going to be Charlo. So I think they're going to fight, but I think they just, you know, they bullshitting around with this and they, you know, getting everybody all riled up over it. But I, I believe they're going to fight because Samson talking his shit and he's saying that, you know, he wouldn't even let David Bingham be that fight in September anyways because he's fighting in June, which makes sense. So I believe they're going to fight. And I believe it's just like I, I believe it was what Drew said, but he was saying that both camps is playing around and they, you know, they just, Keeping everybody on, they gonna fight. You know so, what I'm so, yeah, so I, the, the question, the question is, has David David, David Benavidez been vindicated? 
Has David been? I mean, he hasn't been vindicated because they both bullshitting. You know what I'm saying? They both fucking around. Like, so I'm not gonna say one is better than the other or one is. You know, they both doing bullshit. You know what I'm saying? And the only reason I brought up the Saudis is because Eddie Eddie Reynoso was asked directly about the Saudis, and he said we we wouldn't mind fighting out there, and we wouldn't mind sitting down talking to them about you know whatever they have to offer. So that's why I brought up the Saudis because they're open to it. You right, right. So, 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 this is what I got out of that. For what you say, I'm just going by what you saying. Eddie Reynoso said he was asked about the Saudis, and he said he'll be open to it. So that means that no one from Saudi has reached out to them and said, "Hey, we want to do a fight with you guys, to offer you 150, 200 million dollars." Like people are just throwing the Saudis name around as though, like that, that, like this is what I don't get. Why everybody throwing the Saudis name around? Uh, whether it's whether it's callers, whether it's uh, reporters who interview Eddie Reno, so and stuff. Like, have they talked to the Saudis? Like, I haven't heard the Saudis say a goddamn thing. Nah, but I'm I'm just explaining it from my end. I threw the Saudis out there because he said he's open to it, yeah. and you know they throwing money around. So it's like, why wouldn't I try to make that fight? But I think realistically, whenever Canelo gets that deal, it's not going to be no hundred hundred million. It's going to be more so. 60, 70 million guarantees, somewhere along those lines, between 50 and 70, somewhere like that. And then they'll probably say, hey, if the pay-per-view goes over this amount, you'll get something on the back end so that they don't take a bloodbath on it. I think that's the, the, the realistic offer that he's going to get. Like that pay-per-view will have to do over a million and something for him to get something on the back end because he'll have so much money guaranteed. You know, I don't think they're going to give him 200 million. Bro, just, I mean... <laughs> Yeah, I, you know what I'm gonna do? I, I know, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm, uh, I'm gonna get Rick Glazer back on the show. Just really break this, break this type of money down. What needs to be sold in order to make, make that kind of yeah, money. Yeah, they're gonna have to sell. Uh, I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna bring you. You gonna, have to, you gonna sell more than a million, dog. You gonna sell more than a million. Hey, 150 million guarantee. You know, but anyway. Uh, nah, he, he ain't getting. He, he not getting that, bro. Like I said, it's gonna be something like 50 to 60, yeah. somewhere around there. And then they're gonna say, in order for you to get something on the back end, this pay per view got to do. 1.5 or something like that because so do you, you so much money guaranteed. So do you feel, do you feel, before you go, I'm going to let you go because I got other callers. Do you feel that, uh, you didn't hear Showbiz the Adult, but Showbiz the Adult said that, just go back and listen to that clip. He's on his page. Do, do you feel that um, Showbiz the Adult and Nesta Gibbs are hating on Canelo? Nah, there ain't nobody hating. I'm going to tell the truth about it right now. Like, I feel like this is a fight that Canelo don't want, but I believe that it's so much pressure. And what does so, don't want? What does don't want mean? So what does, what does that mean? The don't want mean ducking. I, I think you don't want to fight the dude so, flat out. I think you don't want to fight him. Right. You know what I'm saying? But I think it's gonna be like Spence. It's gonna be so much pressure, so much money involved that he's gonna have to take the fight. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I, I believe he don't want to fight him. All right. Shout out to Curtis for Long Beach Slew fam. <laughs> All right. So, um, it, it's, it's very, it's very, very telltelling. Some people are telling me, yeah, man, the Benavide has been vindicated. What I look at is there's a lot of different parts. There's a lot of very influential people um, in society, like, like Joe Rogan, Mike Tyson, uh, uh, Stephen A. Smith, uh, you know, uh, even, even big podcasters. If, you two, I mean, Boston podcasters. Um, Carla, hold on. Um, diehard supporters of Canelo are saying the D word, the duck. And so it's like, um, that's when it, it, it hits different. It hits different when those guys say it. I don't know if they was pressured to say it or whatever because there's a lot of pressure right now. It, it, it reminds me of, like I said, I remember listening to Errol Spence. He said, man, I got tired of everybody asking me, man, why I'm going to fight Terrence Crawford, man. And people were saying I'm scared, I'm ducking him and this and that and they, all that stuff there. I just made the fight. And, you know, they made it, and we know what happened. So, shout out to Errol Spence for making that fight happen. Um, Carla, what's your name to call from? What's up, Coach? It's Wookie Wook from Mad. Wookie Wook from Mad. Talk to me, fam. All right. Uh, I'm going I'm to I'm be real short and sweet on this, bro. Uh, <clears throat> the topic of the other show is if David Benavidez has been vindicated. And in my opinion, he has. He has been vindicated. But uh, my standpoint on, the, on this whole matter is, Man, give Canelo the money, bro. Just give him the money, man. I don't know why. Like, you ain't got to give him all the money. You can give, you can give him like good 80, 80 million. Say good 80. <laughs> who, who, 70, 80 when, you, when you say give him the money, who, who, is, who, who going to give it to him? You going to give it to him. I, I'm going to give it to him. The fans <laughs> going to give it to him. We all going to give it to him because we want to see the fight. 
No, but he, he, said, he, he said he said he won't. Well, according to what he's saying, he want 150, 200 million guaranteed. So guaranteed meaning he won't that up front. So the pay per view that's going to be part. later, and then you got people streaming the fights. Streaming is kill pay per view. So you know a lot of people going to nah, be streaming because, that fight if it get made. You know that, right? Yeah, yeah. But coach, I think this is a this is a this is a. Uh, uh, not understanding the business of boxing type of thing coming from from Canelo, he gotta understand that you go you gonna get paid what you weigh, nigga. You gonna get paid what you weigh, so you go. We need to somebody need to tell him. Somebody need to tell him he gonna get paid this little bit like right now, and he gonna get the rest on the back end. He should already know this. I don't know. Hey, so, <laughs> Al Heyman, so you got Al Heyman in there, right? Say, look here, baby boy, check this out, check this yeah. out. Now, I know you want to, I know you want 150, 200 mil, but see what you're going to got to do now. We're going to give you, look, look we're going to give you 20 mil guarantee, but you're going to get the other 130 million on the back end. <laughs> hey, if you, if you up front, you ain't getting nothing on the back end. You ain't getting nothing. <laughs> He need to understand. Somebody need to tell him the business of boxing, bro. He should already know this. How he don't know this already, bro? This is like this is me of Taylor Crawford all over again. <laughs> Damn. But, but my, 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 my standpoint on him is, man, give him, give him some, give him some good money. He ain't got to give it all of it, all of it to him and shit. But you ain't got to give him the whole hundred and fifty. Give him like eighty, and then give him the rest on the back end. Get the fucking fight made, man. We want to see the fight, bro. Okay, but what what we what we all I hey, got, uh, hey, coach, hey, we hey, we can move before you go. What we what we gonna pay David Benavidez? We got to pay him too now. What we gonna pay him? Oh, he he he, he already took the five million before, right? <laughs> so get five million. <laughs> 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 all right, man. All right, man. We can hey, move that's all I got, coach. All right, man. Hey, man. <laughs> See, see, we can, hey, we can move that wrong thing out now. Listen, my dog got it all. Yeah, see what we gonna do there? We just gonna give him the 150 mil. I'm like, I'm like, bro, y'all throwing these numbers around. That's a lot of damn money, bro. I'm like, shit, 100. Bro, like, y'all talking like 150 mil is just something to sneeze at. Like, who gonna pay? Like, I mean, yeah, who, who, who pay for it? We gonna pay for it. You gonna pay for it. I'm gonna pay for it. I'm like, nah, I'm, look, man, this, look, man, the man, man want the money guaranteed. And I'm like, hold on, man, like, they throwing these, this big, big numbers out there, bro, these nine figures. I'm like, damn, 150. Yeah, we did, we did, we, we gonna pay him that. You know, no, he gotta get the rest on the back end, though. We gonna get him by 80 mil. Oh, Carla, hold on. We gonna get him by 80 mil, then he gonna get the rest on the back end. True, true, <laughs> true. Back end promotions, huh? Back end, back end promotions. Oh, Carla, what's the name of your Carla, bro? Yo, coach, this is Mason from Flint, Michigan. What's going on with you? Hey, Mason from Flint, talk to me, brother. Hey, is 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 my man? Uh, is my man Puka Duke? Is, is he trolling right now? <laughs> no, he didn't that's see the funniest it. shit. <laughs> that, that, that nigga, that nigga need a mental evaluation. That nigga crazy. <laughs> that nigga said Canelo don't understand the business of boxing. This nigga one of the richest motherfucking Mexicans to ever do it. Yeah, he got a he, he got <laughs> a net worth over two hundred million dollars. <laughs> And about to get another 200 to keep playing his motherfucking cars, right? <laughs> God damn. That's my dog. Who can God be funny damn. in the motherfucker? Hey, I'm like, that's a lot of money. Man, no, don't don't like, in the motherfucker. Uh, that nigga, 250. Like, where that's coming from? Like, <laughs> yeah, see, we, we got it all figured out. See, here with here, dog. Tell you how listen. What we're going to do now, listen. 150 million, right? We're going to pay. We're going to get Canelo by 80 and 90. Okay, what we got to pay that benefit there? Oh, benefit there. We're just going to get him five me. That, that's five million guaranteed. So that eighty-five million guarantee off the bat. We're gonna give him five mil. You see what I'm saying? And then what we gonna do? We're gonna tell Canelo, now you gotta get the other hundred and seventy, you gotta get the other seventy million or uh, the other hundred and twenty million. If, we, if it's gonna be 150 or two hundred, you gotta get the rest of that on the back end, baby boy. You get what I'm saying? So I'm like, I'm like, oh yeah. 130 million. Damn. I, Man. Listen, Wookie. Wookie Wook, I don't, I don't, I don't want to pronounce, mispronounce my name. Hey, that nigga been going viral all week, bro. I've been listening all week. He's been calling me in. Like some dude, of the man. most outlandish <laughs> shit. I like that nigga, too. Yeah, he funny, and, he, bro. And, and like you said, the, the nigga's serious, too. <laughs> <laughs> That's the crazy part. <laughs> this nigga's dead ass serious. <laughs> Wookie Wook, like, yeah, we going to pay that man. Get that man 150 B. <laughs> 
if say David already agrees to the fire, yeah. then you get the fire. But, uh, but this is this the thing, though, right? You know, there's no contract between the two, so you can't hold them. Like, how about you? Yeah, man, you you don't agree to the five. Agree to what? There was there was there was no negotiations. Ain't nobody signed nothing. What did he agree to? Did he did David Benny be there sign something that we don't know about? Man, like you say, you know I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know what, what's what. I don't know how it's all going to play out. I ain't going to say the start. He's going to pick it up. Niggas yeah. just running right crazy with that shit. Count them niggas pockets. I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> all right, man. But what I, what I do know is that nigga, that nigga, anytime you throw a, a, a number out there like that, bro, you must don't want to fight the nigga. And that's all I know. <laughs> But that, that's it. All right, but shout out, shout out to Mason for Flint. Salute for him. Hey, listen. I'm like, listen, I'm like, this, 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 this all I'm saying right here. This all I'm saying. How do you guys feel about, once again, Nesta Gibbs? Let's, let's hit Nest one more time. Hey, shout, man, shout out to Nest, man. Shout out to Nest, man. Shout out to Nest. What y'all, what y'all, what y'all feel about? What y'all feel about? Where is that? Where is that? Uh, hold on, I'm trying to. I see it right there. I don't see it right there. Where is that? Where is that? Where is that? I don't know. Oh, here it go right up. What y'all feel about this? It's a duck if you're asking for 200 million or even 150 million guaranteed. Mayweather made 180 for maybe Pacquiao or maybe McGregor, yeah. but that wasn't guaranteed up front. It wasn't like. Here's 180 Call million dollar check up front before you fight. Like, I never heard of that in my life watching boxing. So this has to be a duck. I can see the angle of him trying to fish for the maximum offer. And that's why he's saying anybody that wants to offer me this, I'll fight him tomorrow. But it's pretty much a duck. I don't know how you're interpreting it because... Um, now, to me, we, had, we disagreed. I think, I don't know if you heard this, but the 25 pound comment to me spoke volumes. I think to, to Canelo, it's more about that. It's still ducking. <laughs> either way or avoiding or whatever but i think he's worried about that rehydration about the fact that canelo really is a natural 160 pounder because of his talent and his power he can go to 160 and be successful he's concerned fighting a dude who's 6'3 who's so big i think it's a dumb all right man um carla what's your name where you call from what's up what's up i'm one from the bx yeah one from the bx talk to me what's up yo whoopty yo i think i think he got you know what i'm saying i think you know you could put in, you know what I'm saying, 50 mil, ring IQ, could have put in 50 mil, and everybody else to make the fight. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. um, vindicated, I don't know, I don't know if they've been vindicated because they both, I don't know, both of those fucking teams driving me crazy. I think there's fucking better fights now to be watching with this dumb shit with these two dudes and i gotta you know what i'm saying i gotta eat my crow because i said that, i think this is the end of Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Go ahead. that um that canelo was gonna fight benavides but he did it man so you know what i'm saying i was wrong but um that's what i, I mean, got for right now all right shout out shout out to anyone from the bx I mean, they may still fight, whatever. I don't. I mean, I don't know, man. All I know, see this, this, see, see, see this. What I do know. Let me tell y'all what I do know. Canelo album. Hold on, this, this what I do know. Let me tell y'all what I do know, right? Here. What I do know is they're not fighting now. What I do know is if they fight or whenever they fight, Canelo wants to get paid more money than he's ever been paid before in his life to fight this guy. Very similar to Alexander Tyson Fury wanting to get paid more money than he's ever been paid to fight Alexander Usyk, the pumped up middleweight. So I see a pattern there. What I do know is there's a lot of people saying the same shit. And if you're a Canelo fan, if you don't agree with us, everybody's hating on Canelo. I get it. Uh, David Benavidez is guacamole in. He ain't Mexican. He bring nothing to the... I get all that. All that. All that. All that's duck language. All that's duck language. I get all of that. Right? I get all of that. Fact of the matter is, they ain't fighting right now. Uh, David Benavidez's team is saying something conflicting. Canelo saying he want astronomical amounts of money to fight a guy who, and my main man Jules, the ring IQ, he feel like that Canelo will make easy work of David Benavidez. And I thought, and I thought that as well. I, I, well. I didn't think it easy work. I said, you know what, Canelo can break him down, go to his body and stuff like that. But then I'm thinking about it. 
I said, man, you know what? It seemed like he's moving different when it comes to this guy. This guy has worked hard to be whatever, to be the, the mandatory or not the mandatory or the intern champ or whatever. Whatever y'all word salad y'all want to use, but for whatever the reason can't, can't may be, uh, uh, Sacing the Bodies is not doing this and that. So I, I, I don't want to overcomplicate anything. Fact of the matter is, there's an overall perception now from the media, from the public, that Canelo was ducking David Benavidez. It's on major news outlets, major media outlets, and it, now that he said that 150, yeah, sure, 150, 200 million dollars, I'll fight him tomorrow. Now that he said that, that that validates what a lot of people already believe. Yeah, this nigga ducking, like he asked for crazy money and this and that to fight this guy who's supposed to be a hype job, who ain't fought nobody. So um, that's that that's just what it is. Public opinion is a motherfucker. Uh, call what's the name? You call it from? Martin from Oakland. Martin from Oakland, two times. Talk to me. Yeah, Coach, I don't think David has been vindicated, and I'm going to tell you why. David won't be vindicated until he gets his shot at the WBC belt, whether it's around Canelo's waist or somebody else's. That's the only way he's going to get vindication. Because at the end of the day, it's the WBC that's basically calling the shots. They're the ones that basically told him, fight um, Lemieux for the intern belt. That makes him the runner-up for the championship. Didn't happen. Then he fought Plant. That should have been the, the setup for him and Canelo. Didn't happen again. And now they're stringing him along talking about, oh yeah, in March we're going to announce that shit. But at the same time, you know, like you, you called it yourself. The way Benavides is moving. His team don't, ain't, ain't pushing, ain't pushing for the, for the um, mandatory clause. Fucking, uh, they about to fight one of Canelo's fighters. I mean, if 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 you doing wrong, I'm not gonna do no type of business with you on no type of level. It's not like he's fighting uh um uh, for a belt. He just fights them. Just that's just a stay busy fight. So that looks bad right right there on on Benavidez's part. Mm -hmm. So for sure, I don't think he's been vindicated, and I don't think he's gonna be vindicated until he either beats Canelo. Or he fights them. So you so you know? so, so you feel so you feel that um ben, Benavidez is the one ducking Canelo. Canelo's been trying to fight this guy. He's tired of everybody talking about I he's the guy. Anything he's the remotely guy. close to that, coach? No, 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 I didn't. No, no, I, no, I, no, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't say you say anything. I'm asking you. Do you feel that he's ducking because Canelo did? I think they got something figured out. They got a, a gentleman's handshake. They got some type of agreement behind the scenes, and they just letting it play out. And the unfortunate thing is the only one that's looking like an asshole right about now is Canelo. Everybody, everybody, you know, looking at Benavides, he's smelling fresh as roses, and Canelo's the one looking like shit. Why you know that? what I'm saying? That's the, you know, sometimes, you know, Why you got to be the bad guy, you know, because everybody's looking at it like, well, Benavides, you know, going above and beyond, and Canelo the one that's avoiding the, the fight being made when, you know, behind the scenes from everything I could see since I was the one that first said it on your show that he was going to fight Bostic, that it just don't look right. Like, like something, something else is going on because of all the people he could have fought. He could have fought, um, what's up boy's name? Uh, David Morrell. Why didn't that happen? They, they both on the same side of the street. No, but I'm going to go up to 175 and, and fight some dude. There's been Canelo sparring partner for the last three years. They retired for, you know, God knows how many years, three, four years since, since, since Baturvi has knocked him out. Yeah. That, that shit don't make no type of sense unless there's something else going on. And, you um, feel me? I mean, it's, de it's definitely something else going on. And another thing, too, the crazy part about it is uh, David Morrell is the WBA Reg Reggie Belt champion at Super Middleweight. Yeah, I guess Jaime I guess David Morrell going to thank David Morrell. Jaime, 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 no, Jaime Mugia, out of nowhere, is num he's number one with the WBA, but he's getting a shot at Canelo in the WBA over the guy who's the uh, the Reggie Bell champion. So there's yeah, a, there's, I, a, lot, I, I there's a lot there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. So yeah. that we don't know about. And I'm not trying to figure none of this shit out. I'm just saying there's an overall consensus. Like, and you just admitted that that Canelo was ducking, and it's and it's and it's on hitting major media outlets. 
diehard YouTube, Canelo YouTube channels are saying it now, and it's just not all of them, but some of them, and it is it is what it is. That but that's it though. Shout out to um, shout out to Marvin. Yeah, sure. Marvin. That's it. That's what I'm saying. That that's what I'm saying. There's an overall consensus that this is what's going on. A lot of people, a lot of people feel this way. Everybody just can't be, you know, hating. But if you feel that way, it's not wrong with that. It's not wrong with that. But I'm just saying, there's an overall consensus. Now, I'm, I'm saying, bro, I'm watching different podcasts, different new media outlets, news outlets. And they're like, yeah, man, he ducking this dude, man. He don't want to fight this dude. And they're like, all right, you know, a lot of people saying this shit. So be is the adult. And Nestor Gibbs, let that sink in. Um, call it, what's your name? Where you call it from? Man, it's D-Block two times. D-Block two times. Talk to me. Coach. Nesta has his opinion. Showbiz the adult. Oh, oh, what's his name again? Showbiz the kid. What's his name? Uh, the one that his eyes be popping out. What's his name, Coach? Showbiz the adult. Um, yeah, Showbiz the adult. Yeah, has his own opinion. It's his own opinion. Mm -hmm. They're not. Has Canelo ever said he ducked and dodged anybody? Will the man that's in the ring? He gets in the ring. He's in the ring with fighters, Coach. That's a real G right there. Mm -hmm. That's a real. That's. That's the GOAT right there of this generation after Floyd Mayweather. He took on every upcoming fighter. Has Benavidez done that, Coach? Mm, yeah, I don't see I don't see anybody that he ducked. I mean, he's fought everybody that's that he is it's uh that signed up to fight him, from what I'm seeing. You know what I mean? Like Okay. He so, fought, he so he hasn't ducked Morell now. Yeah, he, he hasn't ducked Morell. Um, I don't know what's going on with that Morell situation. To be honest, I okay, because he was part of their contract. Remember that, coach? He's part of that three man contract yeah, that they had. That. I and no that. Canelo Alvarez was on. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. Um, so, um, um, Jose Benavidez said that they had a three fight, three fight contract already. And he said um, they had Caleb Plant. They fighting Caleb Plant. Yep. They fight Demetrius Andrade. And he said they fight David yep. Morrell. He did say that. Um, Jose yeah, Benavidez Sr. did say that. And for some reason, they, they, they saw his upcoming fights and said, wait a minute, we can't, we, we don't want to fight him. We don't want none of that. That's so, a duck move right there. So at a you young feel, age, coach. So you feel that? Go ahead, coach. So you Go feel ahead. that uh, David Benavidez, by him not fighting David Morrell, he's ducking him. Oh, he's ducking him. He's plainly in front of everybody, but nobody wants to say nothing, right? It's only an example to one person that we can we, that we could we could try to put down, which is an established Hall of Famer. Which is, it, like, I keep on saying it. But you don't At feel. At the end of the day, people don't want to hear it. Coach. But you don't feel but that. Ahead, go ahead. But you don't yeah. feel that Canelo. See, what you're accusing, what you're accusing David Benavidez of doing to David Morrell is what people are accusing David, uh, Canelo of doing to David Benavidez. So if you feel that De David Morrell, David Benavidez is ducking David Morrell. And if he has a contract to fight this guy and he's not fighting him, then mm -hmm. David Morrell needs to enforce his contract. You know what I mean? Whatever. Because yeah. Jose, Jose Sr. Yeah. did say that. Uh, he did say that. He said, yeah. we got three fights. Deal. David Morrell name is on there. Now why he ain't fighting him? I have no idea. But people are saying the same thing about Canelo as well. So No, uh, but it's it, Go ahead. Coach. Canelo Alvarez has proven himself too many times. I understand. To say he's a duck. Okay. Too many times. You you keep on going back to that record. You keep on going back to his name. You keep on going to the resume. Compared to Benavidez. Mm -hmm. Even at the same age. More fights, more competitions, more levels, more IQs in there with you. I mean, it's not my fault. It's not Canelo's fault that he lost the ability to hold on to that WBC strap. That's his father's fault. That's his manager's fault. And that's Benavidez's fault. And, and, and I'm going to end it like this because I'm going I'm I'm to let you hit that Jeopardy song for me, for, for me, please, when I get a second. The facts are, like Royal Ricardo said, the fact of the matter is, look which Jose Benavidez David Benavides have all lied about making an offer, accepting an offer from Canelo. Royal, Ric uh, Royal Ricardo, fan, thank you so much for posting that. And if your own manager, Coach, I, kept, I told you this last time, if your own manager or your own person that makes the fight mm -hmm. is telling you, fight hype, that, yes, Canelo Alvarez deserves $150 million. He's earned it, and that's how much it's going to take for the fight. Good. Let's make it happen. But everybody around, they ain't got shit to do with the actual fight, is calling him a duck. Think about that. The old so manager why, from Benavidez. Why, 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 oh, why, why do you feel they are saying that? 
He's saying that because he said, I, I finally know how much it's going to take. No, okay, no, 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 we're no, gonna no, make no. the fight. No, I'm saying go, why, go ahead, coach, go why ahead. do you feel that people who are calling Canelo a duck, Joe Rogans, the Mike Tysons, yeah. the uh showbiz the adults, the, the Nesta Gibbs, the uh um, um a lot of the other different podcasts out there, Stephen A. Smith, why do you feel that they are saying that Canelo was a duck? Do you think because they're looking at Benavides like the, they he, they're looking at Benavides like he's the new thing, he's the new star, right? Like like Ella B says, mm. he's a star. Like, he's this untouchable. He's this Frankenstein. He's this monster, like Mike Tyson said while he was high. The Mexican Coach, monster. <laughs> he's a, yeah. And I'm going to tell you like this. Fight, I mean, high jobs have come in this sport so many times. Benavides has been exposed by Benav by, by Taylor Plant and, and many other boxers. He's been knocked his ass down to the ground by, by lesser competition. And I know I'm saying it's easy, right? It's easy work. And it's Canelo Alvarez. You want to fight me? And the manager from Benavides said, yes, that's how much you're going to take. Then we're going to work on that. Then make it fucking happen. Okay? That's all I got to say with that. Keep on saying he's stuck. At the end of the day, he's the man of wild bread. You've got to respect him for what he's brought to the sport. D-Block, he's down. He's here. Fuck him. Stand up. Man, shout out to D-Block, man. Shout out to D-Block. Let me let me let me let me let y'all hear showbiz. I, I listen. I let me let y'all. This did that. This shocked me. Perez made twelve million against Floyd Mayweather, against Caleb Plant. Forty million. He made forty million against Triple G as well, and thirty million in the rematch. In the trilogy, he earned about forty-five million in salary. So essentially, Canelo Alvarez, at the least is asking for Call, a hundred million more than his highest payday ever. You're fighting Jaime McGee for $35 million. So you must ask yourself, why must Canelo get paid four times more than his highest payday ever to fight David Benavidez? I want 200 million for him. That's how much of a risk he is, how much of a big shot he is. He can give me 200 million. I look up to David Benavide. Canelo. Woo, oh, bro, I ain't gonna lie, bro. I, I, that, 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 that gotta be a clone. That's a clone there, man. That's a clone. That ain't show me. Somebody cloned him. Uh, call him, what's your name you call him from? All right, man. So I really just got to say that Benavide is really the best one out of 168, and everybody just dick riding Canelo for no reason. I don't understand why they dick riding him because I really... Like, do y'all not see how he's ducking? Like, everybody, everything he does, they make an excuse for him. I just don't get it. I don't. My name is Chris. Chris, where you calling from? I'm over here from Georgia. Georgia, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead, Chris. Yes, sir. So, basically, so listen, everybody say, everybody say, okay, fight Morrell. What has Morrell done? He has 10 fights. Am I lying? He has 10 fights. 10 fights That's yeah. it. Yeah, something like that. And then you got you got over you got Canelo. He over here saying he needs one fifty million to two hundred million. You had you fighting Mugia. What is Mugia getting you? There's nowhere near one hundred fifty million. And everybody said, "Oh, Canelo, oh, he gets to do whatever he wants." I never said anything about Floyd. Floyd forever fought the best. He fought the best only. <laughs> As a matter of fact, this is coming from a Hispanic. As a matter of fact, I'm Mexican. What the fuck? What are y'all saying? I'm just not getting this shit. Like I just don't get it. Yeah, um, I, it, it, it's funny. This, this is funny to me because I sit back when I talk about the floor, the floor Mayweather fans, right? You had the floor Mayweather fans, then you had the flow modes. The, they, the flow modes came about through the Money May era, and it's like they pick and choose. It's like they pick and say, "Oh, you give them like flow modes don't like Canelo, but then they'll but but they'll use Canelo." To support whatever their argument is when it's convenient. Canelo exactly. fans don't <laughs> like Floyd Mayweather. But they'll use Floyd Mayweather as an example to support their argument when it's convenient. So I'm, I'm sitting back watching this tennis go back and forth. You get what I'm saying? They're like, boy, I hate, I hate, I hate Floyd. Oh, but let me use Floyd as an example for why I need to want this why, why Canelo want this kind of money. You know, I hate Canelo. Oh, exactly. oh but let me use Canelo as an example to, to prove my point as related to Floyd. So this is what I see going on. And I'm just sitting here watching this shit like, oh, they think I don't see this, but I see it. No, 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 face, face. And one thing, 
one thing they keep saying, they keep saying, oh, oh, you know, uh, David got stripped, this and that, this and that. And they said, oh, you know, that was like five years ago. What the fuck? Con- bro, this man been the contender for three years consecutively. What are y'all, what am I saying? If it was, I'm telling y'all, if it was another fighter, I promise you, if, if it was another fighter that was the champion right now, everybody would be supporting David Benavidez. But because it's Canelo, they make any excuse available. And I'm tired of that shit. What's going on? As boxing fans, like, are y'all boxing fans? Are y'all even boxing fans? Or are y'all just Canelo fans? This is what this is the question y'all need to be asking. That shit is killing the fucking sport. Uh, shout shit out to Chris, ridiculous. Man. Shout out to Chris from Georgia, man. Salute to you, fam. Your point well taken. Salute, fam. Phone lines open, man. Five three zero. Phone phone lines open, man. Five three zero four nine four nine six three six. I'm still tripping off of a rain man. Wookie woo. He like, yeah, man. See, dog, no, we just got to pay him the hundred fifty million. But what we gonna do? We gonna give him eighty up front. We gonna give him eighty guarantee. He gotta get the others on the back end. I want you to. I want you to call me. Hey, shout out to Keith Bulldog. Hey, okay. Dropping that. Bam, dub on your boy. Hey, Leroy. Super Damn, y'all talking crazy numbers, boy. Over, boy, boy. I'm like, y'all throwing nine figures out there like, y'all throwing nine figures out there like, like it's five dollars. Uh, call hold on. What you say, fam? You say, I had to send something because of D-Block. Hey, man, shout out to Keith Bulldog, man. Salute to you, fam. Say, dog, go D-Block. Hey, D-Block made you send it, huh? Shout out to 3 for 10. Hey, okay. Dropping that quarter of a dub on your boy. He said, why didn't David fight Plant to unify belts before he got stripped? And we, we spoke about that before. Um, Samson Lewis saying we're going to wait to make that fight happen later on down the line. You you right. You, 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 we, we spoke about that before on here. Like, dude, you could have unified the division. You could have fought Billy Joe Saunders. There's a lot of stuff they could have did. But they practice in that same side of the street politics over there, you know? He said, now that Canelo did the hard work, David won his shot. <laughs> so you said, Canelo, Canelo did the heavy lifting. Canelo did the heavy lifting. <laughs> Shout out to 3 for 10. He said, oh, why didn't David? Oh, yeah, you, yeah, you said that twice. All right. Hey, look here, man. Yeah, Canelo did the heavy lifting. Now he won his shot. Carla, what's your name? Where you calling from? Uh, I'm Lewis. I'm from Phoenix, Arizona. Lewis from Phoenix. Talk to me. Nah, hey, Coach. I've been. I, I just described to your show maybe a couple about a week ago, two weeks ago. Man, I'm, I'm feeling your. I'm feeling your vibes on uh, every, all your content you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Uh, I might have jumped on right now, but I will hear people talking about Bash Canelo, liking Canelo, and jumping on Floyd Mayweather. Listen, I'm. Um, I come from. Phoenix and I grew up in Chicago for many years in the boxing scene out there. I fought as an amateur. I'm, if I can, if I may, just give my opinion on one thing. Canelo has earned the right to call his shots, and the reason why I'm defending that one is on pure fact. He's been in the game professionally what 14, 15 years. No, longer than that. He oh, turned. He's been. He's been in the yeah. game for nineteen well, years. This is nineteenth year. Oh yeah, yeah. But I'm talking about as far as in the U.S. market being known. Mm-hmm. I, from what I remember, it was about 14, 15 years. The reason why I know is my father's from Sonora, Mexico, across the border, and I'm half Native American. And uh, I remember when he was making noise in that circuit across the border, and when he started coming out here professionally, he was eventually groomed and everything. But what I'm trying to say is, my, again, my opinion might be validated, might not be validated. I'm 41 years old, so I'm a little bit more wiser about how boxing is. And I know the professional realm is a whole different politics monster and all this other stuff. But the reason why I'm going to defend him, I think he's, it's a little outlandish that he's demanding $200 million to fight Benavides. Hmm. But Benavides, everybody's saying that Canelo's ducking him. Ducking him, ducking him, ducking him. That's all you hear, man, out of people's mouths. What about, why don't we hold that same energy in that same caliber of righteousness that people keep bashing Canelo that he's ducking? Well, who has really Benavides fought his resume? Caleb Plant hmm. and Bubu Andrade. Two good names. Everybody forgets that in 168 pounds, Berlanga's there, Morel's there. What about them? Why? Why? If if uh, if Benavides is so wanting to prove himself to be such a champion, such a monster, such a caliber killer, hey man, there's two other names out there that you can go ahead and extinguish, and then you have a valid point to sit there and say that you know Canelo's ducking me. 
Canelo has taken care of all the champions at 168. He couldn't even put out. When he fought against Caleb Plant, he couldn't even knock him out, man. So if that doesn't, if that tells you something about the boxing IQ, the caliber of what Canelo Alvarez has to offer, what do you think is going to happen to Benavides, man, when they, when they face each other off? What, Benavides is a weight bully. He's, a, he's walking around damn near as a cruiserweight, man. You know what I mean? And people are, are always bashing Canelo that he picks and chooses who he fights. I'm a huge Floyd Mayweather fan, and I remember Floyd Mayweather back in the 90s until the early 2000s, how he came up. Didn't, didn't he do the same thing? Didn't Manny Pacquiao do the same thing? But everybody's always pushing this narrative and talking bad about Canelo. Canelo's just another fighter that had his moment. He's up there right now. He's, what, 32, 33 years old. He's got maybe 34. Five he'll good be 34 fights left in him. 34 this year, yeah. Yeah, he's going to be 33, turn 34. He's got, what, maybe three, four more years left in him? If that... And then he's going to do the same thing. He's going to ride into the sunset as one of the greatest fighters of our era, just like how Floyd did, just like how many Pacquiao did, like Miguel Cotto, like all these other fighters in the past. So I just don't understand why people are always bashing Canelo, man. All right. Well, shout out to Lewis for Phoenix, man. Salute to you, fam. Thank you for calling the show. Yeah, man, Lewis, hey. God, I don't know why y'all keep saying he'll do Y'all keep y'all scandalizing, scandalizing dog old Canelo name, disrespecting his character. Y'all mad because he got draws. Y'all mad because he got money, this and that. Y'all hating, and, 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 and Ness is hating, and Showbiz is hating too, and Joe Rogan, his, his rich ass, he hating. You know, so everybody hating. I, I get it, I understand. I get it, I get it. Trust me, I get it. Um, Carla, what's your name? Where you call it from? What's up, Coach? This is Anthony from San Antonio. Anthony from San Antonio, talk to me. Yeah, so uh, here's the thing. The fact that, I, I guess I just want your opinion on this real quick. Mm -hmm. I want to know what you think. We're all sitting here, not all of us, but a lot of the Canelo fans are sitting here and trying to play banner, right? Talking about, well, he deserves this much, he doesn't deserve this much, right? <laughs> do you think people million. have been conditioned? <laughs> yeah, do you think people have been conditioned that way? Or do you think it's just Canelo fans that's being crazy? No, I mean, it's just, it, what it is is, you know, uh, you know, boxing, you know, you have fans that are very, very passionate about their favorite fighters. And what, what it is is when you, have a, when you have a group of fans who are passionate about their fighter, they, they, they feel the need to protect them. You get what I'm saying? For whatever the reason may be. Right. And, um, and that, that's, that's, that's what I noticed since I've been on social media. They don't, um, you know, so that, that's, that's what it is. Whether you, whether you hate Canelo or hate Crawford. Whether you love Tank Davis or I hate Tank Davis. Whether you love Devin Haney or I hate Devin Haney. Whether you love a new way or Tyson Fury or Anthony Joshua or you hate him. It just, that's, that's, that's what goes on. And the more popular the fighter is, the stronger the love is for that fighter or the hate is for that fighter. That's, that's what I see that's going on myself. I agree. And I think the fact that we're sitting here and saying, well, the Saudis, maybe, look, all I know at this point, kind of like you said, right? And the showbiz said this earlier, too. So just to kind of, like, uh, go off that. No, showbiz ain't hating. He's telling the truth. The fact is this. We don't have a fight with Benavidez. Canelo hasn't said anything about no Saudis. He hasn't said anything about working with anybody else specifically. All Canelo said is, I want this much. That's my price. Otherwise, I'm not fighting. That's all we know. Yeah. So the fact that we have to speculate says a lot. That's all I got to say, Coach. All right, salute, fam. Shout out to Anthony from uh, San Antonio. <laughs> hey, boy, I tell you, boy. We ain't not, they <laughs> see, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Uh, call, hold on. See, this, see, see, this, I've been hearing a whole lot of, hold on, nah, 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 nah. Wait a minute, nah, she went, yeah, nah. She what we got to do. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying, oh, hey, I'm trying to keep him laughing, right? I'm trying to keep him laughing, but I'm like, man, this shit, boy. I'm trying, I swear to God, I'm trying, I'm trying to keep him laughing. I'm just, I'm saying, we keep a serious face, man. I ain't gonna, you know, you know, just let the people talk. I ain't gonna, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to keep him laughing, bro, but it, it's, it's very difficult at this moment. It's very difficult. Um, Carla, what's your name? You call it from? Yeah, this is Alex from Dallas, Texas, land of the loser, Errol Spence Jr. How are you today, Coach? Man, I'm good, doing good. Alex from Dallas, Texas, talk to me. Mira, um, I just wanted to say, man, that I don't understand the A like that so far going on towards Canelo's, and mm -hmm. because I just really don't understand how is the a fighter like Canelo cannot 
ask for $150 million when you have Tyson Fury, who sells less and no, is not undisputed, asking for 200 to become undisputed a heavyweight. Mm -hmm. A guy that doesn't pay, get paid, doesn't generate the money like Canelo does. So I don't find it crazy. Also, but, I, but what I do find crazy is people that say that Canelo is talking that Benavidez has been two years um, mandatory, whatever. But in two years, he has never put the petition to work to, to, to make that happen. Yeah. Even And people say no, because when you put the petition, it's already 75% for the champion and 25 for the challenger. But 25% for the challenger still more, way more than what Benavides is worth. Because Benavides, you, he only had two pay-per-views. And we can arguably say that he averaged around 100,000 pay-per-view buys per view. I mean, per fight. And we can arguably say that Canelo averaged around a million. You know, taking in consideration his fight against Mayweather because that was two million on pay per view sales. So in reality, Benavides is worth ten percent of that fight, not the, not twenty five percent like the if he put the the petition he would work. If he put the petition, he would work twenty five twenty five percent for him. But he don't even do that. You know, he really worth ten percent. And why why, why 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 do you think why do you think why do you think they never petitioned the WBC? Well, the WBC president, Suleiman, said that about a week or two weeks ago. They, they never put the petition. That, that's why the reason, that's the real reason why Canelo hasn't been straight. <laughs> because he's been mandatory, but he never put the petition. <laughs> so that ad credit is to what people may be saying. There may be something in the works. They never put in a petition, so maybe they are doing some backdoor dealings or something of the sort. I said that, I did a show like three weeks ago. I said, let everybody in on it. All I'm in this shit together. I said this. But there's an overall perception that Saul Canelo Alvarez is ducking David Benavidez. And uh, a lot of people are saying it. Uh, influencers are saying it. And that's what people are saying. So, um, of course, you had a Canelo fans I, who don't feel who don't feel that way, and I understand that. Oh, I think but, I think I think it's part of the marinating. I think it's like it may happen in September still, but while it happens, let's let's make Canelo look like he's the doctor. Let make let make let's make Benavides look like he's the real deal. So when it finally happens in September, I think it will be selling better than if it will happen now because I think we just marinate in the fight I don't think neither fighter are scared of each other they're just listening to their advisors and plus and to to make the most money for it but you know good I'm work from the Benavides team but I'll see this fight happening in September and Benavides will still have his ass whoop alright shout out to Dallas man Dallas Dallas Texas stand up alright alright Alex I heard Alex okay okay Hey man, we gonna let we gonna let the people talk, man. Let the people talk, man. Um, Carlo, what's your name? Where you calling from? What up, though, coach? This trillion dollar dreams out of Detroit. Trillion dollar dreams out of Detroit. Talk to me, fam. Man, Canelo Ducky, man. <laughs> That's duck talk. I need one hundred and fifty million. I need two hundred million to fight this guy. Come on, man. I mean, I can see like one hundred and fifty million, two hundred million. What about the undercard? Like, what about your opponent? That's no, no, you don't want to fight no, David No, no, no. We ain't worried about the undercard. See what it is? The undercard, they just going to be happy just to be on the card with Canelo and Benavidez. And then mm. Benavidez, he, we, we going to get him like, you know, he going to get, we going to give him about 500000 and let him get the rest of his money on the back end. We ain't worried about that. And then how the people who going to put this astronomical amount of money up, how they going to make their money back? We ain't worried about that. See, we just going to put the money up and then just, just so they can see the fight. And all these business people. People, they ain't gotta worry about making no money because we just want to see the fight. Do you like uh, it? Just you get what I'm saying? Like, this shit sounds crazy to me, but you know. absolutely, man. And then people want to act like you know, they saw the question well, why he ain't why he didn't uh push for his mandatory spot and all that. Come on, stop acting like y'all don't know the game. If he does that, <laughs> then you won't see David Ben be there be there fight until 2028. <laughs> you won't get a fight. It's it, you know, Canelo held the bag. He got the money. I don't like it because back in the day, the the fighters they used to want to fight the best fighter. They used to want to fight the best guy to prove themselves. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's unfortunate that the fans uh, are making the sport so so weak. Like these dudes are not really fans of boxing. They fans of of of, uh, of of the fighter, and that's when the fighter leaves. 
or loses real bad, then they leave the sport. They don't come back because they not really. They don't love the sport. They attach to one guy. When he loses, they don't even watch the sport no more. They be done with it. All right, salute, fam. Man. Shout, shout out to you and Dollar Dreams, Detroit. Um, let me see. Let me see. Do I have this? Somebody want me to pull the video up. Of, um, I'm sitting. I'm sitting there looking at Mike Tyson, boy, nigga, motherfucker, Mike Tyson, boy. Shoot, sure, Lord, boy, we don't whoop nobody else. We whoop the goddamn Jake Paul, boy. All 58 years old, of Mike Tyson, boy, nigga, Mike, man, nigga, we, you know, Jake Paul, Jake Paul, we finna put our hands and foots on you, boy. <coughs> you can believe that, all that, all that shit, you ain't, all that Nate Robinson shit, you ain't, ain't finna be none of that. Let me see, can I find this? Here? I had a video right here. Hold on. Um, call him. What's your name? You call him from? <clears throat> What's up, Coach? It's JBN from Fort Worth. JBN, uh, <clears throat> did you call? Oh, this your, this your, oh, this your first time. JBN from Fort Worth, Texas. Talk to me, fam. First time, first time, Coach. First time, Coach. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. I see all the hate. All the hate continues with a uh, Canelo, the Canelo bashing because of this bum, David Benavides, mm -hmm. which I don't feel like he's been vindicated. When you have your own promoter, the guy that you answer to, the guy that always tells you what to do. David Benavides and Jose Benavides work for Samson Lukowicz because they're the ones that fucked up that Caleb plan fight for him, and they were okay with it. Mm -hmm. They had no problem with that, and they were fine with that. So, like, when the guy that you respond to and the guy that you work for comes out and says that Canelo does deserve the $200 million, mm -hmm. I mean, that says something that, yeah, like, the talks are in the work. We just all got to calm down, and I'm pretty sure maybe the fight will happen in September. The only question that I have about that is that can Benavides get through Boston? That's the only thing that I that I have to say about that. But that's what I that, 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 that that's where the conclusion that I go to. If your promoter, I mean, if your manager, the guy that you respond to, is saying that Canelo it does deserve the two hundred million and the and that the that he can get the money, then I mean, I don't think it's anything crazy that Canelo is saying things like that. Let me let me ask you this. And do, do, another, do you do you do you think what do you think that um. David Benavidez, he you know he he'll be an easy easy work for Canelo to um, to beat up. He just be able to, um. Do you think that'll be an easy fight for him? What what level of difficulty do you give that fight for Canelo? Uh, so it, it, I'm not saying I I believe that Canelo can can knock out David Benavidez. The only thing that makes that fight a hard fight because I I, I honestly believe that that um David skills as a as a fighter as a boxer they're like at a D level. But the thing that makes this guy uh, um, uh, a hard fight is because this guy is, is a big fighter. Like, this dude is really big. He's not big like Teofimo. Let's say, like, Teofimo was big for 135. No, this guy is really big for that weight. So I feel like the size and the volume that he brings, because he does bring a lot of volume. He does throw a lot of shots. Mm -hmm. And Canelo's stamina is kind of wearing down. I feel like that's what can make it difficult. But Canelo will know how to how to uh, pace the fight, and he'll know how to, um, how to cut down the volume from David Benavides because yeah, David Benavides has volume, but against who? Against uh, a guy that you couldn't knock out, Caleb Plant, mm -hmm. against another bum that Coach Eddie keeps hyping up, they uh, Demetrius Kaka Andre. Like, come on, like those guys, and and so like, and so another thing, I, I keep guys guys keep calling the show, and they keep saying, oh, Canelo has to fight. Uh, David, Canelo has to fight David, but how come nobody's calling in the show and telling David to take the Marvin Hadler route, eliminate every possibility that Canelo has other other opponents like David Morrell, Edgar Berlanga, Christian Mobili, because he's a top five fighter also. How come nobody's saying eliminate all those guys? The fight is going to be built up even more. Your name is going to be built up even more, and Canelo will have nowhere else to run. What do you think guys aren't saying that, Coach? <laughs> <laughs> well, JB, I fuss with you, bro. I fuss with you. I mean, it, it, I it's a real question. You, like, well, how come guys JB, aren't saying I fuss with you. Like, yeah, you, you. <laughs> and, and another thing about um, we got other thing, call, I don't, call I, I, man, I don't, I'm gonna give you one more minute. Go ahead. <laughs> look, man. Look, they were gonna beat us as a bum, and I keep saying over and over. The only, the only reason he's at a B level at super middleweight. <laughs> Is because he's a very big guy. But once he moves up to 175, mark my words, that motherfucker's going to get knocked out by Bozic. And another thing that's going to add the cherry on top, David Morrell is is probably going to fight uh, Demetrius Andre on that same card. Um, David made uh, Demetrius Andre quit. 
But David Morrell is going to knock that motherfucker clean out. He's going to sleep that. He's going to sleep that bomb, Andre, and that's going to knock out all the leverage that David uh, gained from that win. That's all I got to say, Coach. Yeah, you take care, <laughs> Fucking <laughs> JB in. Boy, I fuss with JB. That's my nigga there, boy. Hey, I'll call on though. Boy, JB in, boy, be standing 10 toes down, boy. JB in be like. <laughs> dur, dur, dur. <laughs> JB in, boy. Boy, hey, hey, I'm forced to JB in. Shout out to our Steven X. Hey, okay. Dropping that quarter of a dub. He said Chris Mannis reported last month that Reynoso called Benavidez as a weight bully to a member of Benavidez's team. Canelo mentioned David's weight, too. Yes, he did. He did mention his weight. 25 pounds. He did do that. Um, Carlo, what's your name? Where you call it from? Hey, this is Mayo from the Shy. Mayo from the Shy. Talk to me. Hey, what's going on, Coach? And before I say anything, I always believe Canelo will be David Benavidez. Mm. I think David Benavidez is a fundamentally flawed fighter. But Canelo is clearly ducking this dude. Asking for $200 million, $150 million is absurd. This dude, Canelo, pay-per-view numbers have been dropping since Triple G. He's been selling less and less because he's been in fights. Fans have not been wanting to see, haven't demanded his last four fights. Mm. Nobody asked for them shits. Fucking Jamel, nobody asked for that shit. Now, why? He, he obviously don't want to fight the men. Mm. And this is a problem in boxing right now. I feel like a lot of fighters have just been using the what do you bring to the table instead of fighting the people who are in position. Also, David Benavidez is ducking David Morrell. He do not want smoke with David Morrell at all. David Morrell is the only person in that division that's bigger than he is. Tall as he is, longer than he is, you do not want to fight that dude, David Morrell. And I see all these people discrediting David Morrell. David Morrell has been champion since his third fight and been knocking everybody out that they put in front of that dude. Like, that dude is. But do you see nice the argument? Do you see the argument? This, this, this is the argument that I'm hearing. David Benavidez brings nothing to the table. He hasn't fought anybody. Canelo's fought A, B, C, and D. Okay, well, the same argument can be made for David Benavidez and David Morrell. David Morrell um, doesn't bring anything to the table. He hasn't fought anybody. He's only had 10 fights. He's not a yeah, that's, So they, they, you, they're using that. You can use that same see, argument on both sides. So I'm like, this is what I see going on. Yeah, this is my problem. That argument is stupid. That oh, argument is stupid. stupid as hell. It don't matter who the fuck. It doesn't matter who the fuck you fought if you were in position. If you were champion, it's your job. To fight your fucking content, the mandatory. Who the fuck he fought? Just because you don't know who the fuck he fought, don't mean he didn't fight nobody. He in that position for a reason. He fought whoever was in the rank to get into that position. For the most part, we all know the sanction body got some fuck shit that be going around. The Roby Romero, how did he get here? All that, you know, we know that be fuck shit. But for the most part, people who get in those positions fight that way to get in those positions. David Benavidez is the youngest, the youngest. Super middleweight champion in that history is division, and he's a two-time champion in that division, and undefeated. And undefeated. You know what I mean? Now, I ain't saying, like, you know, the Boo Boo Andre, yeah, that was a name. I'd rather see him fight David Morrell, but even David Morrell, it don't matter who the person is. My problem is, it's like, these dudes, these top dudes don't have a problem fighting they mandatories when they ain't like that. When it's a Gildrum or a Mean machine, or who, who the fuck ever. But when it's somebody nice that everybody can recognize, like, yeah, that dude different. You can see it. Everybody don't want to say, oh, this is an eye test. You use an eye test. Well, if I use your eyes to walk across the street, your eyes don't work. You can see, you can see the difference in levels, the seasoning of a person. Like I saw Shakur Stevenson early on in take me long to see, like, oh yeah, that dude's more advanced. That dude's seasoned. That dude's seasoned. That dude been boxing. He's doing things in the ring that. Right, these other prospects ain't doing. So, like, you could tell that when you see a David Maru, you could tell that when you see David Benavidez. So it's like Canelo, and asking for that absurd amount of money, it's like I hear people saying, "Well, he deserves it." Even David Benavidez's manager, I don't even know why the fuck he even said that shit. Like that fight is not worth two hundred million dollars. That's not a two hundred million dollar fight. All right, we got other cards. Like, that's just—it's uh, like I don't even know why they planned into it in the first place. 
Yeah, that's all I have to say. Yeah, Canelo Duncan. All right, salute, fam. <laughs> so he saved Duncan. <laughs> hey, I mean, hey, I'd be like, sir, can you? I mean, I'd be like, uh, hey, listen, can you summarize it for me? If y'all remember I had Bill Haney on, I say, Bill, can you give me a summarization of it? Like, I don't want the twenty minute version of it. Can you get? Can you condense it down? To like the two minute version. Can you do it in two minutes? Yeah. Yeah, see, what it is? Hold on. Oh, Carla, hold on. Yeah, wait a minute. Hold on. I, I, I remember I said that to Bill. He said, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Coach. Now, hold on now. Now, now, you want to try to limit me the two minutes. You know, when I say Dev is the face of boxing, you know, then, you know, and, and you want me to explain the explanation is going to take longer than two minutes. Why should I be limited? So when I got to hear that for two minutes just to get to the before you even start to get to the point. I'm like, man, this shit gonna be twenty. This is gonna be a twenty thirty minute call. Um, shout out to Santana. Uh, um, hold on, Carla, hold on. Shout out to Santana dropping that two dollar super chat. He said David only fought one natural one hundred and sixty eight pounder, and it was planned. Okay, so um, what does that? Well, does that mean that he hasn't earned the right to fight Canelo or what? I don't. I, I get what you're saying, but what what is what does that mean? Uh, shout out to Jimmy Vasquez. Hey, okay. Dropping that quarter of a dub. He said, Coach, put me on the D block versus Rick Timms on the card against JBN. <laughs> he, said, he said, get JBN. He said, all emotional about his daddy, Canelo. Hey, bro, y'all need to cut this out, man. Y'all need to cut this out, fam. Come on, man. God damn. Down from the bar, there's a platform stage. Uh, Carla, what's your name? Where you call it from? Jesus from Dallas. You say Jesus from uh, from where? Dallas. Jesus from Dallas. Talk to me. Man, coach, I just got to say, I don't know how the hell you do it, bro. <laughs> they're all saying the same shit, man. <laughs> they always bring, nobody, nobody's questioning the fucking resume, and they're fucking bringing up the resume, who has he clawed with. <laughs> I'm like, God damn, bro, like, the writer didn't have to wait this long to fucking get the mandatory position. Munguia's not even a mandatory, and they're not even asking $200 million for him, and it's just crazy, man. It's a duck when it's a mandatory. Nobody is questioning his resume. It's a duck. Like, that's, that's it. It's a duck. It's just a duck. Get over it, man. They they sound like, uh, I don't know if you've seen them, um, what's it called? Eminem, when they, when he tells them you're saying the same shit that he said, so they're all saying the same shit. All the callers, bro. I don't know how the fuck you do it. Sometimes, I, sometimes when they call you, I just put pause and let two minutes go, and then I just skip it because I'm like, I know what about, what the fuck they're about to say. The same shit. Well, that's it, coach. Hey man, shout out to Jesus, man. Dallas, stand up, man. D town. He over there with D block, man. Hey, man. Hey, oh wait and see, see this is what I'm hearing. We must internalize the flatulation of the matter by transmitting the effervescence of the Indonesian proximity in order to further segregate, to preclude on the issue of world domination with only circumvent excuse me, circumcise the revelation that reflects the aphrodisiac symptoms which now perpetrates the Jericho's activation. See, that's what I'm hearing. I don't know what y'all hear. That's what I'm hearing, though. <laughs> that's what I'm hearing. I'm like, hold on now. Wait a minute now. She went in now. What we got to do. I'm like, oh, so, okay. Let me see how they Okay. So I said, I'm going to just sit here. Let me, see, let me see how you figure this shit out. What kind of words out are they going to use? Uh, Carla, hold on. No, I see what we got to do now. She went in there now. She, 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 they been in there. Man, ain't fought nobody, Colt. He's a weight bully. He, Canelo was right. 25 pounds overweight. He's a weight. He's too, too big. He fat. He lost his belt twice on the scale. Coach, remember? He lost his belt to cocaine. And he, and he lost his belt uh, for being overweight. Yeah, you do know Canelo got popped for you and Clint Better all day and take his belt. Yeah, but that different, that different. He got suspended. But see, Better be there. And he's 6'3. He too tall for that division. He David Better be there really a heavyweight. And another thing, too, he he ain't Mexican. He guacamolean. He don't know where he from. He don't know if he Honduran or, or, or Dominican or Puerto Rican or 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 or, 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 or Cuban or Mexican or American. And another thing, too, coach, and another thing, his daddy be talking bad about Canelo on different podcasts, 
And and, and another thing too. Another thing too, coach. And, and, and he ain't fighting nobody. He fight bulls. And that's so all. I'm, I'm just sitting there listening. I'm like, you know what? Damn, all of them is saying the same shit. <laughs> you know, all of them saying the same shit. Um, call him, what's your name? Where you call from? What up, coach? It's Wookie Wook. Uh, for mass two times in this motherfucker. Wookie Wook two times. Talk to me. Hey, Coach, um, I got a huge problem with these last couple of callers. <laughs> Especially, uh, I don't know the dude, uh, JDN, and, yes, the, and, and, and the other dude that just got off the phone. Uh, uh, we, I got a problem. I got a problem with y'all, bro, because do you want to see the fight or do you not want to see the fight? Y'all killing the fucking fight, man. Shut up with all that stuff. Shut all that stuff shit up, bro. Like, we want to see the fight, bro. And we come to Coach Malachi. Uh, 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 platform for smoke. So I got a huge problem with y'all uh, discrediting David Benavidez. We ain't gonna get the fight that way, bro. We ain't gonna get the fight the more y'all. But he ain't here, man. He, he ain't fought nobody. Man, we, we want the fight or not, bro. Do you want the fight or not? Y'all killing the fight, man. Set all this stuff shit up and let's get the fucking fight, man. That, that's really my, that's my main issue. I started hearing a whole bunch of crying and shit, man. Wait. So that ain't even a topic. That ain't even a topic. What are we doing? What are we talking about here? We, <laughs> we need to be talking about how we going to get Canelo this $150 million. We need to be coming together, put all our money in this, in this fucking pot to get Canelo this 150 man. That's what we need to be doing. So see that? Hey, that man got a net worth of over two hundred million dollars. I ain't giving him a dime. Listen, man, when they make that fight with Wookie Woo, when they make that fight, then I buy it. But look, the man got a net worth of two hundred fifty million dollars. He wearing Dosi Gabbana every day. He coming on the stage at press conferences with pajamas on, silk pajamas, Dosi Gabbana pajamas. I ain't giving, I ain't giving them nothing. And, and when until they make that fight, when they make that fight, then I'ma buy the pay per view. I'ma support it. But the, the man, the man got plenty of money. Ride private jets. You know, mansions everywhere. Got the got the Mexican cartel backing him. He got he got the entire drug cartel backing him. So he good, man. He good. <laughs> but coach, but coach, sometimes you gotta you gotta you ever play poker? You gotta you gotta bluff a nigga. You gotta bluff his ass. Sometimes sometimes you gotta act like you know what I mean. You gonna you gonna do something and then hit him with the boom, switch a movie on his ass. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. all I'm trying to do. I'm trying to bluff his ass. I'm trying to act like yeah, we got this money for you. We got this money for you, and then you get asked for nothing. I got two dollars. I got two dollars on the, on the petrol. I'm trying to do some shit like that. You know what I'm talking about? We, that's what we need to be talking about. How we gonna finesse this motherfucker to get in this ring, bro? Because we need to see this fight. We need to see this fight, bro. Yeah. And, and, and 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 down discrediting uh, David Benavidez ain't gonna get the fight made. I got a huge problem with that. Y'all need to set that some shit up. Set that some shit up. Just set it on up. And let's get this motherfucker fighting me. Y'all need to be talking. Y'all need to be digging up Benavidez. Yeah, Benavidez, he a monster. You seen how he did Andre? That's what you need to be doing. Continue putting the pressure on him. Don't give this man no way out. Y'all trying to give him a way out. They trying to give him a way out, go. <laughs> hey, we, we, we yeah, got another call. Man, call, man. man. All right, salute, fam. That's my call. He, he, he said he trying to give him a way out. <laughs> Oh, but he's trying to run, see? No, he's trying to run. No. <laughs> he's trying to cry me. Hey, okay. <laughs> Dropping that quarter of a dog. He said, Coach, he said, he said, what is a bro ham? He said, no, bro, uh, that, that's a Cadillac, man. That's a Cadillac. Uh, that's a Cadillac. You, you ever heard of a Cadillac, Cadillac Brom? A Cadillac Brom, right? Uh, in the hood, we call it a bro ham. You know what I mean? We call, we call it a bro ham. You know what I mean? A Cadillac Brom. That's what it is, a Cadillac. He said, Coach, what's a bro ham? Every time you play the clip, I'm dying laughing. Um, Carla, what's your name? Where you calling from? Martin Oakland. Martin from Oakland. Three times. God damn, Martin. You ain't bullshitting today, huh? Yeah. Hey, when I heard uh, Samson Lipowitz agree with Canelo deserving 150, 200 million, at first I thought he was just making fun of Canelo. That's what I thought. I thought he was just mocking him like, shit, why stop at 150? Why not double it and make it 3 million or 4 million or 400 million? But then I thought about it. He's looking at it like, shit, if we could get, if Canelo could get anywhere near that, then shit, we shouldn't have a problem asking for, you know, 20, 25 for David, you know, because let's, let's keep it real. Them Saudis, 
They playing with Monopoly money. Money ain't shit to them fools. Them motherfuckers flaws coach. I done seen videos where they got supercars where motherfuckers just run out of gas and leave a $300 million car out in the middle of the street because they don't give a fuck like that. That's what little money means to them. You know, we ain't talking about the zone. We ain't talking about PDC, you know, companies with budgets. These fools got endless money, you know. They done already put on a bunch of pay-per-views that done lost all types of money. Now, granted, nobody would say no $150 million, and I'm not saying Canelo's getting that. Like I said before, Canelo was responding to a question when they told him, hey, so what happened when they offered you $65 million? And I got that fool he did, and he's like, well, shit, who the fuck is he to be offering me money? Like, he's the A-side, and I got to agree to his terms. And I guess it was fresh in his memory, this one Mexican reporter that was saying, Canelo's so scared of Benavides, he won't fight him for $150 million, he won't fight him for $200 million. So that's when he busted out with that figure. He's like, shit, basically answer that reporter. He's like, man, if motherfuckers offer me that money, I'll fight his ass tomorrow. That's all he was saying. I don't think, I don't think it's his way of pricing himself out. I think he was just talking shit. You feel me? I, I think he got to be one dumb motherfucker to assume that somebody's just going to give him that money just because he puts it out there and he asked for it. You know, but it was just, you know, every now and then you get the feeling yourself and motherfuckers get the talking off their ass and saying some wild ass shit. And I think that's all that was, coach. All right. Well, shout out to, uh, shout out to this man. Okay. Salute to you, fam. Talk about Morgan. Um, Carla, what's your name? Where you call it from? What's up, coach? It's D Block three times. D Block three times. JBN called three times. D Block called three times. What's going on? What's going on, oh. D Block? Talk to me. Well, well, coach, you know, JBN got to be on the undercard, like they say, right? Somebody want to challenge him, too? It looked like it. I mean, I, I think it'd be a good pay per view. I told you, coach. It could be a great pay per view event, by the way. Uh, coach, you said everybody sound the same. You said everybody sounds the same to defend Canelo Alvarez. You said they keep on bringing up the same thing. Well, I'm going to tell you something, Coach. When, you, when you've when you been in this sport for a long time and you know what you're talking about, I think a lot of people know what they see. Yeah. They're not blinded by this fakeness, which is David Benavides, Coach. We know the reals when we see one, just like Tank Davis, Coach. We know when we see a real champion compared to a fake champion. And David Benavides has already proven himself too many times he's not a real champion. He's, fight, he, he's fighting well, intercontinental champions, Coach. He's fighting for a Reggie Bell. It, it, ain't that what he's fighting for this time around, Coach? Who, um, no, he's fighting for an intern champ title at, um, at Oh, okay, another Reggie Bell. Okay, another Reggie Bell. I got you. So, 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 how, so, how, does he, so, so how does he fight for the real belt? I now, don't what, know, what, Coach. What advice, what, advice, to, he, what, advice, he, he, what advice would you give him to be able to fight for a real belt? He needs to wait for the undisputed, for for better be even Bivol. He couldn't wait for that. He couldn't wait for that. Now he wants to go fight. Instead of fighting Morel for that contract, he wants to skip him, and then he want to fight a European bomb, like they say, Coach. Weren't they saying Canelo Alvarez was fighting European uh, bomb, Coach? Yeah, you're a bomb, yeah. Okay, so he's a bomb too, right? But nobody wants to say nothing about it because they got so much hate for Canelo Alvarez because when you on top, they're going to hate you. And it's okay. You see Canelo worrying about that? And that's what I'm saying, Coach. I'm saying, put the if you could have put on the video today, it would have answered a lot of questions from Fight Hype when they asked Samson that question. I mean, your own camp, like the caller did three, three four no, callers that, before, uh, said. It's all, go ahead, Coach. I, no, 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 I heard what Samson said, but then I also heard what Jose Sr. said. Jose Sr. said something different from what Samson said. So, um, it is what it is. And it's, it's, it's what, this is what amazes me. A lot of a lot of you guys. I'm not saying you, but a lot of you guys. Y'all pick and choose when y'all want to believe Samson. With Samson Lewis, you guys, oh. you guys were just saying that Samson Lewis was a liar when he said he offered Canelo 55 million dollars, and then he, he he deleted the tweet. And everybody on Twitter and everywhere, oh, Samson Lewis was lying. He ain't offered Canelo no 55 million dollars. See, that was a lie. That was a lie. That was a lie. So you can't believe nothing yeah. Samson Lewis would say. Now Samson Lewis would say something that you agree with, and it's like, yeah, well, yeah, Samson Lewis said that, yeah, Canelo deserved $200 million. So what's throwing me off is, it's like you picking and choosing when you want to believe, oh. uh, believe David Benavidez as his promoter. Is he a liar, and you can't believe anything he's saying one breath, or is he telling the truth? Which one is it? 
Oh, and I could answer that very clearly, Coach, because it looks like I'm going to have to. Yeah. Uh, first of all, when he says about he offered somebody in the, in the room or he emailed somebody and there's no proof, then that's a lie. If you're telling me that you're offering this, the, the, the A side, all this money, and there's no proof, that's a lie. If he's giving you his opinion mm. as the manager and telling everybody, that's a smart move. I, I like what he's doing. I like that. Yes, he does deserve that. That's different. Compa- that, like you say, Coach, that's different. That's different. Mm. Because he's telling everybody he was there and he sent contracts or paperwork of worth so much money. But it was all a lie. Because Ness called him out on that. And that's huh. So when, uh, what I'm telling you right now, Coach, is when he's saying that Canelo Alvarez is making a smart move, he's making the bread, everybody around is pissed off. The old manager from Benavides is saying that. So and that's what I'm this. saying, Coach. So, I'm, not, I'm so, not picking and choosing. I'm just coming with it with what it is right there, Coach. So so, so if, if Samson Lewis would have said Canelo was asking for too much money, that's ridiculous, uh, would you be saying, would, would your position be the same right now? Coach, that's a, hypo- a hypothetical question, of course. Mm-hmm. It, it didn't is, happen. It we it come is. in with, with, we come in with the truth, and the truth is he said that, and we got to stick with the truth and not make it into he- into something else. Now that's what I said, Coach. That's why I'm a stand. It's a lie when he says he's offering you money and there's no proof, and it's not a lie when he's telling the person in front of him, which is fight hunt, of course, and saying that he's making a smart move. But people don't want to see the truth. People want to say, "Oh, he lied. He lied." No, 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 no. He lied about the contract. There's no proof. He's telling you his opinion yeah. as a manager that Canelo Alvarez is a smart man. So, D block, D town, D C D field. Fuck him up. Yeah, my okay. My my question, my question would be this. <laughs> oh, I got a good question. My question would be this: How do you justify two hundred million dollars? Um, Carl, hold on. How do you how do you justify that? Like what numbers, since we doing math and all this stuff there, one plus one equals two, two plus two equals four, like how do you justify that? Like, okay, again, people are saying the Saudis have money, they leave, JBN say, not JBN, um, um, Martin from Oakland say they leave $300 million cars in the middle of the desert. Like, you got to, you got to, again, again, you got to convince me, just, just, just explain this to me. Businessmen who make hundreds of millions of dollars in different transactions or whatever, you're telling me that we don't care not about making no money back. We don't care what it sell. We just gonna give you 150, 200 million dollars guaranteed just to fight this guy, and we don't know how we gonna make our money back. None of that. It's just that simple. It's a smart business move. Remember, listen, there's nothing wrong with Canelo warning, saying, or sarcastically saying, I want $200 million. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Just because you say that what you want, don't mean that's what the fuck you're going to get. Uh, is Al Hemi going to give it to him? What about Floyd Mayweather? Is Floyd Mayweather going to give Canelo $150 million guarantee? I'm pretty sure ain't neither one of them going to give him that. So he ain't gonna get it from uh, the uh, he ain't gonna get it from Florida. He ain't gonna get it from Al. So where is it coming from? Oh, the Saudis going the Saudis gonna put that money up. Where are y'all getting this from? Did Canelo say the Saudis gonna give him this? Like where is this coming from? Anyway, let's get the super chat. Shout out to uh, Jimmy Vasquez. He said, "Isn't Wookie Wook um, the one saying Tank shouldn't fight the top fighters?" He said, "Can't take him serious." Okay. Uh, shout out to AP, dropping that quarter of a dub. He said, Coach, these ninjas are comedy. I love the show, bro. I appreciate that. Uh, shout out to Santana. He said, David petitioned for the 175 instead of Canelo. Yeah, I mean, that, that's crazy. All that, all that shit crazy. Um, Carla, what's your name you calling from? What's up, Coach? It's Sir Senior. Uh, Sir Senior, su- uh, uh, shout out to you, fam. Salute, brother. Yes, sir. All right. So I find it real funny that now all of a sudden Canelo gets to multiply his biggest payday. As a matter of fact, the biggest payday anybody ever got in boxing. He gets to put somebody's whole career in boxing all together as a guarantee. But when Bud wanted guarantees of just what the money he was normally making, he was wrong. He need to take 60-40, 70-30, 80-20, whatever we give you. Take whatever we give you. 
Yeah. Take take this pork chop sandwich and go. Yeah. You should be honored to just go ahead and get this money. You say you a real G. Yeah. But the face of boxing don't have to do that. The face of boxing is sounding like Frank Martin to me. He wanted a little more, uh. He said, I need a little more, uh. We already given you more money than you ever made. So we need a little more, uh. Then what threw me for a loop, yes, he, he's done, had a great career. He's done had what people would call two or three different average boxers, great career. So he gets to pick and choose. Well, why he can't get his picking and choosing together? First, he don't want to fight no Mexican fighters. Now he only want to fight Mexican fighters. Oh, well, the next person going to be from America. Now the person ain't from America. Oh, well, I'm, I'm ready to fight anybody you put in front of me. I'm ready to take on everybody. Oh, everybody but him, unless you want to hit me in the head with 200 million. He sounds like, um, what's the ball headed dude from, from Austin Powers? He won oh, 200 yeah. million dollars. This it. dude is insane. Then we want to sit here and we were skipping the fact that we telling the Saudis to bring up this money. Now we want the A Rap money. Now we want A Rap money. Like a old um like a nineties rap song. But what about Mayweather making two hundred million um every month? And I don't want to throw anybody under the bus. Three hundred million. But he makes two hundred million every month. Three hundred million. So why he ain't putting up putting up this um money? Why why he ain't putting up the money? Why we ain't telling the PBC to put up the money? Since they got all the money in the world, they never make no bad deals. They the best of the best yep. with honor, like they the men in black. Why we ain't telling them? So it when Bud wanted just the money he earned, oh he he negotiating bad. But Monster Newway is out here fighting just as much as Canelo. He fighting. He got more champions. Um, he got two undisputed. Canelo barely got one. He out here fighting everybody in his weight class. He fight. He fought the slick black fighter. While the slick black fighter was still a slick black fighter, instead of like Canelo went to they old and they got um next you are gonna see Canelo fighting Mike Tyson. Canelo ain't did nothing but turn into a uh, new Jake Paul. I got you. Right, and shout, I'm out of here, coach. Shout out, cook with Sir Scene. Salute him. <laughs> This is this is what this is what they talking. This is what he's talking about right here. Uh, I think um, JBN. Hold on, let me, let me try to find it. JBN and uh, this is what they're talking about right here. Sorry about that. Oh, and this is why he won't fight him. Does Canelo have a point? <clears throat> he brings nothing to the table for me. It's just he brings just twenty five pounds more in the <laughs> night. <laughs> the, the fight on, on the night. Just, that's it. But if, he, if, if some promoter knock him because he's nothing to offer me, he's nothing to offer me money, you know? I'm the one. I'm the one. So, but if one promoter who I work to, they come and say, I offer to, I offer to you 150, 200 million, I fight tomorrow. So do you feel that Canelo is right in his assessment that David Benavidez doesn't bring anything to the table, and i.e. that's the reason why he should not fight him and won't fight him. What do you think? Question. Canelo says that uh, David Benavidez brings nothing to the table, and this is why he won't fight him. Does Canelo have a point? He brings nothing to the table for me. It's just He brings just 25 pounds more in the <laughs> night, the, the fight on the, on the night. Just, that's it. But if, he, if, if some promoter knock him because he's nothing to offer me, He's nothing to offer me money, you know? I'm the one. I'm the one. So, but if one promoter who I work to, they come and say, I offer to I offer to you 150, 200 million, I fight tomorrow. So do you feel that Canelo is right in his assessment that David Benavidez doesn't... Call him, what's the name where you call him from? And i.e., that's the reason why he's... two times. Um, I can't hear you. What's what, 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 who it says again? Oh, Rod from New York, three, uh, two times. Rod from New York, two times. You the last call. Uh, go ahead. Yep. Coach, uh, <clears throat> um, I think Steve Kim had tweeted uh, pretty much uh, the numbers in terms of 
making money or at least uh, making some profit on the pay-per-view in order to come out even, I think at $80 a pop, you have to sell uh, about 1.8 views, million views, just just to clear out 120 million. So in order to pay Canelo all that money, that, that has to make at least 2 million views. According to Steve Kim, so you may have to, you may want to. Uh, no, nah, you could do the yeah. No, nah, you could do the math uh, on that. Like, yeah, you're right, you're right. You, you could do the math on that, but then talking about the gate, talking about uh, you're gonna talk about um, sponsors, this and that. Like, I mean, if one guy's getting 150, 200 million guarantee, um, again, where is that money coming from? That's the see. That's the million yeah. dollar question. Like everybody's talking about the what? Saudis. Well, he's working with the PBC. He's a PBC fighter now, or working with them. Uh, Canelo is a PBC fighter, or whatever arrangement they have. So where is that money coming from? Is Floyd Mayweather going to put the money up? Is I Hemi going to put the money up? Amazon Prime ain't gave them no budget. So like, where is this money coming from? Now everybody talking about, well, see the Saudis. The Saudis got the money. I'm like, well, who said the Saudis are going to give a PBC fighter 150 million dollars guarantee? Like, like, you get what I'm saying? Like, like I want people just to sit down and think about this shit. It doesn't make any sense to me. And, like, 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 literally, it don't make no sense to me. And that's that's my same question that I I had given Ness, and I was like, okay, you guys are bringing the Saudis in here, but what? Like, have they said anything that they even want to watch the fight? Like, do they even fucking know, like, these fighters? Because from what we've been seeing, they just like heavyweight. That's something that they've been focusing on, so we don't fucking know. And yeah. that, that, that's if, even if they want the fight. Yeah, exactly. So we, we, we're here speculating and, 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 and doing mental jerk-offs yeah, yeah, one yeah. another, thinking about counting other people's money. Yeah, counting other people's um, money. Yeah, we yeah. really don't know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Shout out to Rafa New York. Salute, fam. Uh, one of Go ahead. Yeah, that's it, man. Yeah, I'm like, you like... Y'all like the way y'all explaining this shit is like, yeah, man, she what we gonna do now? What we and I'm like, okay, he's a PBC fighter now, right? Ain't he working with them? He's under contract with them now, right? So how, where the Saudis come in at? Well, see, the Saudi gonna come in and see they gonna talk to Al Hemi and then they gonna work it out with Al and Canelo and Floyd and then they gonna get him the money and then it's gonna be y'all you know, like, bro, like, dude, is this I'm just saying for me. This shit ain't making no sense what y'all saying, dog. Y'all just don't exclude it. Al Hammond and Floyd. All this money. All of all, yeah, all that money she, you know, come on. Yeah, that, that, I got it. Oh, you know what? This call has been calling a lot. Let me just, I need to wrap this up. This is going to be short. That's um, Call up, call up. Um, this is a short, this going to be a short call. What's your name? Where you call it from? Hey, man, this uh Too Rich from Sportside. Too Rich from Sportside. Talk to me. Hey, you know, I think Benavita has been vindicated, you know. I think that's obvious. But I just want to point out something real quick for you. You know, um, you know, things have been following a pattern. So last year we had Spence beat Crawford. Uh, you know, big fight, fight of stepping. We had Haney beat Prograde, stepping. And we had Benavidez beat Andre, stepping. So now here's Canelo's chance to step. And what we see if he's not stepping. You see, we, we people are realizing it because they've seen all this stepping done last year. You see, so now it's obvious that Canelo is ducking. And, and, and see, Canelo got past trauma from the uh, B-ball fight. You see, that's why he mentioned the 25 pounds. The last time he went up in weight, he got beat up. Mm -hmm. So I really don't think he'll take a fight with Benavidez. Now, 150 million, 150 million, he might sell his chance. He might take a chance. But, you know, I really don't think mentally he, he even want to deal with Benavidez. So, yeah, it's a duck, and uh, Benavidez is vindicated. I right, mean, listen, man, shout out to Two Rich, man. Uh, salute to you, fam. Thank you, brother, for calling the show. Yeah, I um, <laughs> like, like, when you break this down, like, just me just breaking it down. I said, okay, yeah, man, Canelo, he, he pulled to get 200 million. Okay, let's say I agree with that. He's supposed to get 200 million guaranteed. Let's say I agree with that. Where the money coming from? 
Is Al Heyman ever, is Al Heyman, Al Heyman going to give Canelo $200 million? No. Is Floyd Mayweather going to give Canelo $200 million? No. So who put the money up and he got a contract and a deal with the PBC? From what I'm hearing. Where the money coming from? Have you guys heard anything from uh, from, from Turkey Island She saying, yeah, 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 she, we know, yeah, we, see, we got so much money over here, we can just throw y'all 150 mil, we ain't got to worry about, so my thing is, you, you have to recoup your money, how do you recoup 150 to 200 million dollars guaranteed just from one fighter? We ain't talking about what David Benavidez want, we not talking about the undercard, how do you recoup that money? What about sponsors? How many pay-per-views you got to sell? And what is the price point of the pay-per-view in order for them to make their money back? You guys are telling me, yeah, because they saw this and they got money, they just like to throw stuff away. How, like, who told y'all this in there? Let's give everybody a round of applause. <laughs> Bro, like, <laughs> you know, woo, Lord have mercy. Anyways, uh, shout out to everybody who gave um, a cash out. Uh, shout out to Jamie, Bell, Jamie, Jamie, um, uh, Jamie from New York for giving a uh, two dollar cash out. Salute to you, fam. Um, shout out to all, all the super chatters. Shout out to Martin King Boxing. Hey, okay. Shout out to Santana. Hey, okay. Shout out to AP. Hey, okay. Uh, shout out to Jamie Vasquez. Hey, okay. Shout out to Crosby. Hey, okay. Uh, shout out to Stephen X. Hey, okay. Shout out to Three for Ten. Hey, okay. Shout out to Keith Bulldog. Hey, okay. Shout out to I Am Your Leader. Hey, okay. Shout out to JXV. Hey, okay. NHA Two. Hey, okay. Shout out to the one Mr. Ham. Hey, okay. Shout out to v VFR. Hey, okay. Shout out to Air uh, on. Uh, shout out to Air on uh, Bedham Court. Hey, okay. Shout out to Raphael. Hey, okay. Shout out to Elena. Hey, okay. Let's give a round of applause to our sponsor. Charles Edward Cheese. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh my god, these motherfuckers throwing numbers around like, yeah, man, see what it is. And shout out to Kendall Johnson in the chat. No, man, it's going and I'm and I, when I ask the question, okay, how you gonna get that money back? What you mean? We ain't got to worry about that. The Saudis got all the money. Like you just on assuming that the Saudis are interested in this fight, forgetting that Canelo is a PBC fighter now. Fight it with behind whatever raise me he have. And and and, and Al Heyman, so Al Heyman them ain't gonna be interested in putting up 200 million, 150 million, guarantee. Guarantee. That makes sense to you. Yo, he deserved that. He didn't face the boxing. Okay, cool. You feel he deserved it. Where is it coming from? Is the Mexican cartel gonna put the money up? Canelo backed by the Mexican cartel, right? Are they gonna put the money up? No, the Mexican cartel ain't gonna put the money up. You, yo, Canelo fans, y'all ain't mentioned the Mexican cartel. No, the cartel ain't gonna put the money up. Al ain't gonna put the money up. Uh, 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 Floyd ain't gonna put the money up. We gonna get the money from the Saudis. Who told y'all that? What you mean, who told y'all that? We know that's who got the money for the fight. True, true, true. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. So that means if that don't nobody put that money up, guess what? We ain't gonna get that fight. That fight ain't, that ain't gonna sell nowhere near that amount, amount of pay-per-views to justify that for to pay one fighter $150 million guarantee. Anyways, anyways, anyway, anyway. Yeah, man, the, you know, the, the soldiers don't want to make their money back. Al Heyman, like, come on, man. Anyways, um, let's give a shout out to all the day tender on the Friday. Let's give a shout out to all the tender on the PYTs and Honey Dips. Shout out to Mimi24. Hey! Okay. Shout out to Sheila, Sheila and Callie. Hey, okay. Shout out to the goddess. Hey, okay. The dentist of wisdom. Hey, okay. Shout out to uh shout out to uh, uh Lisa Bell. Hey, okay. Shout out to Food Revolution, my sister. Hey, okay. Jackie Hernandez. Hey, okay. Miss Connie Stevens. Hey, okay. Uh shout out to Bless 365. Hey, okay. Shout out to Tila from North Omaha. Hey, okay. Hey, Miss Parker. Hey, okay. Shout out to the lovely Amina. Hey, okay. Shout out to Felicia Williams. Hey, okay. Can't forget about La Jessica. Hey, okay. Karma Serene. Hey, okay. Kiara. Hey, okay. Shout out to Summer in November. Hey, okay. Shout out to Elena. Hey, okay. And um, let's give all the sisters a round of applause. <laughs> hey, yeah, I mean, 
you just imagine you walk you listen you walking you walking in there you walk you walking in I don't give a damn who you is Mexican American black man you walking in there yeah 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 man yeah man you know who I am you know I want I'm I'm, I'm Canelo I want 150 million dollar 200 million dollar guarantee you know what I mean I'm like showbiz the adult made a point Floyd Mayweather didn't get 200 million dollars guarantee. So you're going to get a contract that Floyd Mayweather ain't, ain't, ain't even got. Floyd made, Floyd made $100 million, $150 million. Yeah, but he didn't get it guaranteed. He got it on the strength of the back end of the pay-per-view. That different. That different. Who you think he is? DJ Quick? No, huh? No, Kick him free? I didn't say huh? Oh, you must be Jimmy Walker. Well, you ain't nothing. You don't deserve nothing, you don't get nothing. You get what I give you. I got a contract between me and you that say you do what I tell you to do. Therefore, shut the fuck, don't say nothing, don't speak to me, don't look at me. I tell you something. Money, you know, I just say. Blue, if I raise up, gonna be trouble. Trouble. I'm walking off. Bro, like, bro, like, 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 <laughs> y'all act like this is baseball. Baseball is when they get all these astronomical numbers. Shout out to the Martin. He said, did Fury and Gano outsell Benavidez and Andrade? Yeah, I don't even know. I don't even know what Fury and Gano did. Um, y'all act like this baseball. When dudes get $100 million guaranteed contracts. Bro, like, there's a reason. It, like, bro. <laughs> Whew, you know what, man? I, you know what? It, it ain't no need. It ain't no need. It really ain't no need. Um, anyways, y'all watching the show, hey, watch it. Didn't want to hit the like button. Riley, get him. Look, fuck you. Fuck the plane you flew in on. Fuck them shoes, fuck those socks with the bell on it, fuck them cheap ass cigars, fuck your yuck mouth teeth, fuck your hair piece, fuck your chocolate, fuck Guy Ritchie, fuck Prince William, fuck the Queen. This is America. My president is black and my Lambo is blue, nigga. Now get the fuck out my hotel room. And if I see you in the street, I'm slapping the shit out of you. Yeah, just because they saw this and they got so much money that they don't mind just losing money on a fight. That ain't gonna generate nowhere near that. Uh, and it's going to be in Saudi Arabia. So Al him and them ain't going to be involved? Florida ain't going to be involved? Mm, okay, interesting, interesting. All right, man, it is what it is. Uh, shout out to everybody in the chat, man. Shout out to Miss Parker. Hey, okay. Shout out to Knockdown 305. Hey, okay. Shout out to Jamie from New York. Hey, okay. uh, shout out to the Nigerian Nightmare. Hey, okay. G5. Hey, okay. Shout out to L. Harvey. Hey, okay. Food Revolution. Hey, okay. Shout out to Bob Scott. Hey, okay. Dr. Paul Evans. Hey, okay. Shout out to La Jessica. Hey, okay. Shout out to Bless 365. Hey, okay. Some in November. Hey, okay. Uh, let's see. Shout out to Miss Parker. Hey, okay. Boy, I'm talking about they, 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 the way they throwing these. Hey, bless. The way they throwing these numbers out there, boy. I know, shit. These niggas these throwing out baseball numbers. They are. They got it already figured out. Yeah, the Saudis going to come in. They going to put this up. How they going to make the money back? Don't worry about how they going to make the money back. We just know where the money coming from. True, huh? true. True, true, true. Anyway, before we go, we got to say all praise is due to the most high, the most exalted, the greatest human being on the planet Earth, Mr. Al Heyman. And shout out to dog on Rick Timms as well. Well, you know, I guess I got to be like everybody else and saying Al Heyman. <laughs> I can quit my job now, baby. Six figures, baby. You feel me? I'm about to but, but a name, a name. Do you have a name? Oh, nah, nah. I ain't got no name, you know. Name them names, man. <laughs> they know who they is. Name them names, <laughs> please. The names need to be named. They know who they is. <laughs> the Mexican monster. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm like Young Dolph, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> R.I.P. to Young Dolph, man. It is what it is. But you could call me the can man, because anybody can get it. Africans, Americans, Dominicans, Mexicans. Anybody can get it. Motherfucker just dividing the Saudis' money up like it ain't nothing. Yeah, see, the Saudis gonna do this and the Saudis gonna do that. Like, where y'all got that shit from, fam? Man, I know they ain't who I think it is. Man, that's that nigga coming on, man. He ain't talking about all that shit. I tell you, I'm gonna get your ass, huh? Man, stop all that damn barking and take his ass with me. I tell you, I'm gonna get you. I don't wanna hear that shit. I tell you. You ain't no damn dog, boy. You a pussy cat. He ain't talking about I got my heart in your head. He ain't talking about Shit, you know what we gonna do? We just gonna pull up with them goons. Hey, hey, who was you, pimp? Hey, what the hey, fuck? What, what the get your motherfucker. Hey. Hey, the nigga squeeze me, get that freak hey, ass nigga up out here. my nigga say what back the, the fuck, fuck up, dude. Man, the day 10 and running Fridays, man, let's celebrate. Hey, 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 hey. yeah. Ooh, 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 that look good. Hold on, 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 
Boy, it is what it is, man. I'm just saying, I don't, I don't know what to say, man. Like, I'm, I'm sitting there listening to this shit, scratching my head. I said, damn, they got this shit. They got this shit all figured out, huh? Now, I am the number one contender. I'm tired of James the Poodle, Grim Reaper, whatever he want to call himself, ducking me. All right, I'm tired of man driving around town in eight Rolls Royces. He ain't fought nobody. I'm still in a bro hand. Man, it is what it is, man. Shout out to, shout out to them, shout out to all the fighters who bringing it back to big time boxing. Just don't, don't ever forget when I found you, you were, you were strung out on coke. When I found you, you was, you was like a big house contemplating about killing yourself. So don't you ever forget who brought you to big time box. I drug you back. I brought you back. I provided food and put food on your table for your family to eat. And I'm doing it for the second time. So you do, don't you ever forget that. So who gonna put the money up for this for this for this big fight? Oh, the Saudis gonna put the money up. How they gonna make their money back? Hey man, shout out to the hood, man. I wanna thank the whole hood who came out here. I love y'all. I did this for the hood. Y'all know I beat that boy. And shout out to my dog, Booger Ray Leonard, man. Boy, these bullshit Superman stories, boy. Y'all be coming up with some crazy shit, boy. I am sick of hearing these bullshit Superman stories about the Wassa legendary Bruce Leroy catching bullets with his teeth. <laughs> Catches bullets with his teeth? Nigga, please. I am sick of hearing these bullshit Superman stories about the Saudis. Just going to give Canelo $200 million guarantee. $200 million guarantee. Nigga, please. True, true, true. Like, you know, y'all, you know, like, these, yeah, everybody, they got it all figured out, huh? But when you, when, when you are put in a, a certain position, he should be, go, I mean, he's able to, like, like me. You know, when I was in the position, I can pick and choose who I want to, cause I I, I earned that right. Boy, they got that. that listen, I bet if I'm the soldiers, I'm sitting back looking like, damn, you know, these Americans, these some Americans, some dumb motherfuckers. They sitting back just counting our money. They got it. They got it all figured out that we just gonna break down. Like the soldiers couldn't even make Devin Haney and 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 and, and, uh, and Tank Davis fight. The Saudis reached out to Tank Davis on the internet, remember? And tried to make, they can't even make that fight. They said, yeah, we want to get a cut to Al Heyman. They haven't even heard from Al Heyman. Don't nobody know where Al Heyman at. Hey, you know what I mean? Yeah, we're going to get in contact with Al She, and we're going to make this work. Because, you know, like, come on, man. Like, like, like dog, like, come on, man. Nigga, I'm, nigga, I'm talking face on the brochure, boy. Lights out, okay. you hear me? Clap on, clap on. Okay. I'm, you got me fucked up, cuz. Man, shout out to the tenant owners of PYTG, the honey dip, man. Shout out to Doggo and Sheila from Cali. My sister, Bless365. Salute to Ahmed. Shout out to Tila. Shout out to the lovely Miss Connie. Lisa Bells. Knockdown 305. The Nigerian Nightmare. JC. Cooking with Sir Senior. Shout out to uh, Charles Edward Cheese. Shout out to um, Food Revolution. La Jessica. Shout out to uh, Summer in November. Miss Parker. Shout out to my, um, uh, my, my sister. Um, shout out to my sister. What my sister? I forgot her name. Um... Shout out to Ebony76. Shout out to Dr. Paul Evans. Shout out to Pauline. Shout out to Corey Bradley. Shout out to um shout out to um School of X Men. Shout out to No Cap Entertainment. Shout out to Wookie Woop. Shout out to just anybody I may have forgotten. Shout out to Demetrius. It is what it is, man. Y'all know what time it is. Tender Rollers PYTs and the honey dips. It is what it is.
I just, I just want y'all to think about that. Hundred and fifty million, two hundred million guarantee, and it, 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 where that's coming from, and, how, and then whoever put the money up, how the fuck they gonna make their money back? We talking about for one fighter. How many pay per views that need to be sold, and what is the price point of the pay per view for them to recoup their money with a profit? This for all you Canelo fans. Do your homework on that. Do your homework on that. For all those who throwing these numbers out there, do your homework on that. That's the question I have. Explain, niggas, niggas explain that to me. Because I ain't got but a GED, you know, but I got a master's degree in common sense. I'm not the brightest light bulb in the ceiling, and I'm damn sure not the sharpest, sharpest butter knife in the kitchen drawer. But I got a PhD in common sense. Like, explain that to me. See you guys, um, I'll see you guys tomorrow, man. You know my motto, don't meet me there, beat me there. Peace. Man, I'm out of here, bro. Let's go.